Go ahead. Meeting call to order today is Tuesday, September 19th. It's now 7.41 p.m. Town Council meeting in the Town Council Chambers, 1170 Main Thank Street, you, West Warwick, Rhode Island. Councilman Lachardi? Here. Councilman Messier? Here. Councilman Padula? Here. Council Vice President D'Amico? Here. Council President Goslin? Here. There is a quorum. Minutes of the previous meeting resolved that the minutes of the September 5th 2017 Town Council meeting are hereby approved. Move the resolution. Second the resolution. Move and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. I have, a, yes, I just one thing. Um, after reviewing the minutes today, I, I couldn't open the minutes, and I, I sent everybody an email just to see if everybody had the same issue. Um, there's a, a, an error on the minutes, um, and the section where it's under claims, L, when it says a roll call vote, um, Councilman Padula abstained, Councilman Goslin recused. Um, I said I said yes, Councilman Messi had said yes, and Councilman D'Amico had said no, correct? Mm -hmm. No, I said no. yes. So it was a 3-0? It would have passed if he said no. Okay. Good. My fault, sorry. That's okay. I thought it was 2-1. Any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have. Consent agendas, license application resolved that the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to proper departments and being disposed of or awaiting recommendation, the same is hereby approved. Move the resolution. Second the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Those licenses that were just approved. Flea Market Permit, West Warwick Civic Center, Quantica, um, Ultimate Barber and Salon, Continuum Care, Raffle Permit for uh, West Warwick Caring for Animals, and Business Licenses have all been approved tonight. Consent to Jen. Oh. Yeah. Consent agendas correspondence resolved that the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to proper departments and being disposed or awaiting recommendation, the same is hereby approved. Move the resolution. Second the resolution. Moved and second in discussion. This is all stuff that's on the agenda later on, so. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Profit search discussion sponsored by Council, Vice, Council President Goslin. Yeah, I'll move the resolution. I'll second. Move and second. John. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Uh, previously, in uh, one of the meetings uh, about a month or so ago, we had some conversations. I had introduced, uh, Mark and I had had some conversations about uh, potentially bringing a company by the name of Profit Search to do um, an accounts payable recovery audit of. Um, payments, uh, credits, um, and things of that nature. I invited um, Michael Trooper and Doug Costello here tonight from Profit Search to tell you a little bit more about what the uh, what their work would be and answer any questions that the council has. Thank you. Michael? Just state your name and uh, who you represent. Uh, Doug Costello, I'm president and owner of Profit Search. Um, Mike Trooper, senior auditor of Profit Search. All right, give us a uh, synopsis of what you do and what you plan on doing. The uh, synopsis would be in a letter that was dated July 28th to Mark Carulla, where we explained uh, who we are and uh, the service that we provide, which is basically to search through the payment records of organizations and to find where they've spent too much money or spent money they didn't have to spend or maybe spent it erroneously in different categories like duplicate payments. Uh, we find credits that haven't been booked. We find sales taxes that have been paid on exempt transactions. We find uh, discounts and rebates that haven't been, uh, uh, um, haven't been applied to invoices uh, that have been billed to the organization. So in other cities and towns you've seen, for instance, paying taxes on items that you should be paying taxes on? and somebody yes. might not have seen it, and that's what you'd be auditing? Yes, we've done, in Rhode Island, we've done audits at the City of Providence, and we've done an audit at the City of Cranston, Rhode Island, also in Massachusetts, we did the town of Framingham. What's your average recovery? Uh, it depends a lot on um, 
the circumstances in the in the and the management of the function in the finance department. Generally speaking, we find from about twenty-five thousand to fifty thousand on a hundred million dollars of payments. And how do you get paid? We get paid I know how you get paid, but I get, want to be public. We get paid on the funds that are uh, refunded by the vendors. So we get a percentage of the money that comes back to the organization. If there's no money that comes back, then there's no fee. So what's your percentage? Contingent. Sorry? Your, your percentage. What is it? 10%, 25%? Typically it's one third. One third. Okay. So this is for money that we <coughs> would have never collected. Correct. Well, we might have. Well, so <coughs> this is this is money. So, for instance, let's say WB Mason charged us seven percent sales tax, and we weren't supposed to be charged for that seven percent sales tax. They would go after WB Mason for that seven percent of sales tax that we may have paid. So, yeah, you're right. It's money we would never probably see unless it's ordered and, and looked for. So, um, seems like a pretty easy decision. I mean, it's it, they do get one third, but. We still get sixty-six percent. One third of nothing. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I agree. we are presently uh, auditing the West Wall School Department. We're having a successful audit there, and um, you mentioned W. B. Mason. We got some, we're getting some credits back there that we found that were out there that were old credits, and they're sending a refund check in for that. How far back do you go? How far back? How far back would you go? We go back about three years. We go back as far as we can go in a discussion with the vendor because they have to agree and validate that the money is owed back. Okay. And that's generally about three years. Thank you. Any questions from the council? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Collect us some money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're on to four. I'll do it. Ordinance number 2017 22, second reading, sponsored by Councilman Padula, an ordinance of Appendix C, traffic ordinances of the town of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of West Warwick. I'll move the ordinance. Second. This is the stop sign at Hodder and Vincenzo to come down. And this is the last reading, so then we can we take can it down. Do, take it down and put the right one up. The right one is up. The right oh, one is up. We, we, oh, we, we just put the right take one, the other up. one down. We're going to take the other one down. Oh, all right. We had this on last meeting. Any yeah. questions? Hearing none, roll call vote. Jason? Yes. Angelo? Yes. Jay? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. Ordinance number 2017 24, second reading, sponsored by Town Council. An ordinance authorizing the town manager to implement a fiscal year 2017 budget corrective action plan intended to prevent the occurrence of a deficit. Move the ordinance. Second. Move and second. Discussion? Mark? Councilman, it's come to my attention that there have been some concerns about uh, one of the funding sources that was presented um, in the ordinance related to OPEP. And I just wanted to clarify um, that item, if I may. Yes. Uh, so, so that everyone understands OPEP is what's called other post-employment benefits, and what it is is retiree health care. And several years ago, at the creation of the five-year plan, um, our public safety divisions, police and fire, uh, came to the table and agreed to contribute 1% contribute of their salary into an OPEB trust. Along with that, the town agreed to do an OPEB actuarial study, which basically projects, similar to a pension study, projects future health care costs for retirees. And the town agreed to um, make contributions into that trust fund along with those uh, employees. As it stands today, there's approximately uh, 1.7 million, a little more than 1.7 million in that trust fund. Um, and what we were proposing to do as one of our um, revenue sources was to look at using some of that OPEB trust fund in an amount not to exceed $500,000 to actually pay for um, retiree benefits that would have uh, been otherwise paid for by the town out of its general fund. So basically, what we would be doing, rather than using money that's in the general fund to pay for these retiree benefits or health care bills, um, would be to 
submit those and have the OPEB trust actually pay those. Uh, and, and just to clarify, um, that is an allowed use of the OPEB trust fund under the Rhode Island general law. It allows you to pay current and future retiree benefits. So that's what the town would be doing. Just to clarify a little bit further, uh, of the $1.7 million that is currently in the OPEB trust fund, about $255,000 of that is the actual employee contribution with accumulated interest. So the majority of that is town money. Just to go a little bit further, the intent of the town is to use as little of that money as possible. I have had an ongoing conversation um, with the president of the firefighters union. Um, I explained to him the process that we were going through, the process that we um, went through to make a determination about that money. I think we cleared up some misconceptions or misunderstandings on his behalf. Um, but I also assured him that we would, we would use a balance of the fund balance in the OPEP trust to try to use as little of the OPEP trust funds as possible. So that, you know, that $500,000 is a not to exceed number. We're expecting to use much less than that number. We don't know the number yet. However, I can say that, you know, since our original discussion, the deficit was around 1.4 million. Now it's down a little bit below 1.2 million. Um, so that, you know, daily that's going down a little bit. And we're probably going to come to a, a reasonable conclusion fairly soon, hopefully be on a, around a million dollars, and we'll be able to just touch a very little bit of that OPEP trust fund. We don't know the amount yet, but that's the intent. Are these from people that have paid their taxes late? Is that what the money Yeah, is yeah. Down? So it's, yeah, it's pretty much prior year, prior year collections or people who are paying after the, after the June 30th. Yeah. Mark, with, with any, um, this goes back to <clears throat> profit search. If they, if they find, whatever they find, say mm -hmm. it's $50,000, goes back to, to us, will that money go back to the 2000, the last year's budget? As no, it would not. It, 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 would, it, would, it would come in as a receivable this year. Um, and reduce this year's deficit. Well, it would go into the general well, it would, fund. It would go into the general fund. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Mark? Anna? <clears throat> I have a little handout to give all of you. Just state your name and address for the record. Anna Golderisi, Carpenter Court, West Warwick. Okay, what you guys are looking at right now is a document that was put together by Helene Anderson. She was at the last meeting. Um, she pretty much knows budgets like the back of her hand and she's been doing a lot of research um, with information that she's received and that I received from the town with the figures that were accurate and unfortunately real. She basically sent me this message. She couldn't make it here tonight, so I'm presenting this for her. And it goes as follows. We can't continue to go over budget by $1 million every year. We don't even have enough in back taxes to cover the extra expenses for the last three years. And you know that we will never collect all the motor vehicle back taxes. We have not met the five-year plan goals at all. The only way to get the budget back on track is to cut expenses. The plan budget has to be realistic. We have not been collecting as much taxes as the budget has assumed we would. Department heads have to stay within their allocated budget. And this is from Helene. I recommend a 5% cut in this year's budget for the police, fire, and general government budget. Every other department should be cut 3%. No cuts in the school department. Also impose a hiring freeze. The numbers that she's looking at these are taxes that seem to stay on the roll even when they're not collected. And these are all in arrears. This is money that you don't know what percentage you're ever going to collect re realistically, especially in the, in the motor vehicle taxes. 
We're talking millions here. So basically what she's looking for is to see, is this taken into consideration at this point on what you're about to vote on now? On fixing, no. that's what this, she's this assuming. Is last, this is last year's budget. Council, we're talking about this year's budget. Uh, yeah, so, so, so talking we're about. talking about the 2017 budget, which we're balancing. Right. Um, this is an exercise that we've gone through, okay? Um, and we will be going through this exercise in the 2018 budget. We're gonna look at uh, revenues and expenses. And, and what she's done here, and this is a historical perspective, is determine a variance between the two, right? So, so what you've got here is here's your expenses, here's oh, I your know projected what it is. revenues, and your assumed revenues, the difference between. So we need to look at that difference between based on historical data and where we think we're going. Her point is you need to look at it now. Yeah, we are gonna look at it now. That, that's what we're doing. <laughs> So that's why we imposed um, a spending freeze, and we're not actually hiring anyone right now mm -hmm. um, other than a tax assessor, which is an absolute necessity. Yes. Um, and we'll be looking at other things that we can implement to create savings. I've talked to every department director. Mm -hmm. uh, we've basically frozen all non-essential overtime. There'll be no more non-essential overtime, no non-essential expenditures. Then we're going to go into these budgets. We're going to recreate those budgets, bring the department heads in, have another discussion, yeah. determine where they can make those cuts. And I appreciate what you're saying because that's mm -hmm. the exact exercise we're about to go through and come up with a more realistic revenue projection, determine what the difference is, and close that gap as we go through the year. We will be back to the council at least once this year, if not more than once, to make those amendments to the budget moving forward as is required under the charter. So when it comes to the, the taxes that are in arrears, how far are we keeping those numbers around? How long? What is the, the length before you finally throw in the towel and say, yeah, I, you I, know, yeah. this is never going to happen? You know, to be honest with you, I, I don't know the drop off on that. Um, that's, that's something we'd have to talk to the, the tax collector about. But I've seen communities keep them, on, keep them on. But it's Rose, money we don't time. have. Uh, I, I, no, I understood. So, but let me just explain. So, so there is there, there are tax sales that happen. That's taxes that are in arrears. Um, there, there are tax uh, agreements. That would be taxes in the arrears. And there is a number that is plugged into the budget called prior year collectibles, which are taxes in the arrears. Right. Um, so that's a number that's in there. That's a number we we also have to look at. And then there are like non collectibles. So if someone owns owes a tangible tax, they've liquidated their business probably going to be a non-collectible at some point, but we do have a collection company out there trying to collect that money. Um, you also have the other one, the other big one is motor vehicles, right? So, right. so people live in your community, if they're transient, you know, they, they might live in Rhode those. Island, they don't pay their bill, or they, they, they junk their car or whatever, they move. Um, the only way to catch those is if they go to register a new vehicle and they say you owe back taxes in a certain community, they can't register. But if they move out of state, right. it's very difficult to collect. So them. how long would, so, you, would well, you carry a vehicle yeah, past due tax? Yeah, that's a good tax. question, and Rose is here, and hopefully she can answer that. I do not know the answer I to that <laughs> question. It differs from community to community, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. we usually, um, Rose, you need to come to the microphone. Please do. Usually 10 years, but um, since I've been tax collector, I've never, I haven't seen anything cleared from the books. So you just collected somebody from 96, right? I did. We, no, 90, 95. I, 1999 and 2000, we're, we're still collecting <laughs> so, on those. Me. So you said since you've become, I, how long has that been? I've been because tax collector two years. Two years that's that's okay, it. Okay, so just two years. Mm -hmm. And I was deputy before that, and I've never seen anything take, been taken off the books unless it was a deceased or bankruptcy. So we continue to keep we trying to collect. We continue to keep trying to collect those taxes. The, the, and yes, we have been successful in some cases, so we don't like to take them off. I mean. It's not a matter necessarily of taking them off. It's separating them so you're not using them as money that you're genuinely expecting to get in. So, so Anna, just to address mm -hmm. that for a minute, there's, there's a number in the budget, it's prior year collectible. That's the number you're talking about because that's a number that is a delinquent tax or tax in the rears. Mm -hmm. We need to go back and look at that number um, and make a more realistic projection of how much we're collecting in prior, it's not just the previous year, but it's prior year's taxes right. going back. We need to make an adjustment to that number. 
we need to relook at that number. I think that's what you're saying. As far as those dropping off, if that number is realistic, okay, mm -hmm. and we're, we're making that number every year, what isn't being collected, what's on the books is not really relevant to the budget. It's more relevant to an audit. Um, and there are processes and procedures that you can go through with the auditor and the council to basically dispose of those non-collectibles. Right. It's just something to straighten out your books, but I understand what you're saying, and we are going to, we're also going through that process to look at the prior years and come up with a more realistic number of what we're actually collecting historically and hopefully projecting forward, and that is a revenue source, and that revenue source, you know, traditionally, I guess, has been estimated to be higher than actual. Right. That's been the problem. Um, and just one quick thing about the service that we were just discussing to go through the bills to collect monies that were accidentally paid and credits that were missed. Do we have any information that says that this has been occurring? I'm just That's curious. That's what we're going to find out now. It's basically an audit of the department. I asked the same question. I asked yeah, it how, just how big seems this pretty be? random. Like, do you really think there's that much there? Because we've obviously hired people to run our departments. We hope they know what they're doing. I just don't see the need to hire another company. Well, they it's get free. Paid. It doesn't cost us they, anything. They get paid. It does if they find oh. something. No, hold on. But it's money we would but have it's never money gotten. we would not have gotten. Well, if you really think there's that much, I think our own departments okay. should but look Anna, for it. Anna, ask yourself this question. Would any place be in business if they didn't, if, would they be in business if they think they couldn't make money? I understand that, but we're a town that doesn't have money I'm to asked, spare. But that's the question I asked, Anna, and I asked the same exact question you're asking me no. now. And I said, how, how much could there be? And like you said, W.B. Mason up at the school department. I don't know how much it was or anything like that, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> whatever money we're paying in taxes or whatever that we should not have paid, um, you know, somebody comes in, sends a bill from W.B. Mason, and all of a sudden it's $5,000 in paper. You spend $350 on taxes. Well, that's $350 that we should not have paid the taxes on. So... I really hope that we had better qualified people that wouldn't let something like that go through. I really do. But thank you. Alan, just state your name for the record. Alan Plaza, Five Robin Lane, West Warwick. And just a comment uh, with regard to taxes, we're almost one third of the way through the fiscal year. Uh, in the old days, because I've been attending these meetings a very long time, the, there used to be for the town council a section on their reports that listed actual budget, or should I say budgeted expenses and actual expenses to date. It was like every two weeks they could look at it. And I know that slides as people continue to pay, but I understand that's not there anymore. You don't have a ready reference where uh, we have collected 25% of the taxes. We have uh, or expected to spend 25% of the budget by this time. We've spent 35%, things like that. A ready reference that should set off alarm bells for you people that something's not right. And as Anna pointed out and Mark has pointed out, you're running a million dollar deficit. Uh, I don't have the records, we don't have the audit, but if it's true that for the five-year plan you're running million, a million-dollar deficit every year, it's going to hit the fan. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that we can't do it. Some of my sailors used to think they had money because they had checks in their checkbook. Uh, it doesn't work that way for this community, and you need to do something about it. Uh, you know, looking at the FY18 budget, you should be doing that right now. And that's why I'm saying, I know you mentioned that point, but you should know the figures right now for FY18. You really want to know, want to know them? Yeah. That's, I know it's magical you, Are you referring, it'd be similar to what the Sewer Commission, when they report to us? Every Christine, month. Christine very mentions. Exactly. And that used to be that was, of the budget. Th that was past history. That's what used to happen at these council meetings. Trust me, I've been here probably longer than, you know, Mr. Boyer's got me, Bert, <laughs> and Mrs. Padula, maybe Mr. Williamson, but I've been here for these meetings. I've stood here before. And I know what these got, what you re your predecessors received. 
Uh, so I would suggest you reinstate that practice, policy, whatever. This town needs to get its books in order. Mark? May, may, may Mr. Palazzo, we are in the process of doing that. So, um, you know, in my old job, I used to look at that weekly, mm -hmm. personally, okay? So we're going through that exercise currently. We will be reporting that. And to be quite honest with you, that's not the council's job to do that. That's my job as a town manager. So if, I, if I'm not doing that as a town manager, I'm not doing my job. But they should be able to respond they, to people like me because I don't want to throw darts they, at them and they, they don't have a clue. Please don't, but they will be informed, and they will be informed by either myself, the finance director, or the new town manager moving forward. We're working on that process. Uh, we're almost a third of the year through, uh, a th third, third of the way through the year. That would be in October. I just, just a, right. That's a tiny, tiny thing. But A quarter of the way. We are, we are we're definitely a quarter of the way. And um, John and I were actually going over those numbers earlier today and firming those up. You know, it takes, it takes a little bit over the quarter to reflect back on the quarter. So we're working on that. We expect that starting in October, those reports will be forthcoming. So thank you. And you have closed the books on FY17. You have all accurate actual figures for FY17. The, 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 the figures won't be all inaccurate and actual until the auditor looks at them, but we have projected figures and we're pretty firm on what we think we have, yeah. Okay, stand by. Just state your name for the record. For, let me quickly, Mark, how, how often will those come out? Monthly? Monthly? monthly we, could, we could do monthly reports, we could do quarterly reports. I'm going to suggest early on we do month, definitely do I, monthly reports. I agree with that. Yeah. Jasmine Conkin, 79 Lexington Avenue. Um, I actually have something else to say later about the West Warwick Lions Club. <laughs> A nice update, but I just wanted to comment on this uh, budget conversation. So most of you, if not all of you, are business owners that are sitting here. And I'm sure you operate at least in the black, not in the red. And if you were in the red, you Bailey. have some serious conversations. Um, so I just want you to think of as you go through this auditing process and looking at what we're spending this year to look at it as if we're actually a company and not just an organization with what you what you sir said about having a checkbook with unlimited funds behind it. When I was in sales, we had sales forecasts that I was accountable for weekly. I had a meeting with my manager and I had to explain to him why I was or wasn't on task to hit my goals for the year. And if I didn't hit my goals, I didn't get a bonus. I couldn't buy a $20 bottle of wine versus a $15 bo bottle of wine or what have you. So, um, so please just take a look at it as we're running a business here. You're, you're dealing with our money, the people, that our citizens that are paying our taxes every year. We're looking to you and to everybody who did, and I did vote yes on the budget because I expected what I voted for was actually going to happen. So I just ask that you look at this, Jay, you know, I know you have a, a successful business as well. Look at this as if it was your personal checkbook that you're writing money for. We shouldn't have departments that can just spend money freely without getting approval beforehand. I can't spend money at my job without asking before I spend it. And if I spend it, I don't expect a blank check back from my boss to cover the expenses. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Hearing none, roll call vote. Angela? Yes. Jason? Yes. John? Yes. Jay? Yes. And I vote yes. Ordinance number 2017-25, first reading, sponsored uh, by- You skipped one. It's 23. 23. Oh, I'm sorry. H. Did I go right over it? Yes, I did, I'm sorry. Ordinance number 2017-23, First reading sponsored by Council President Goslin and Council Vice President D'Amico, an ordinance amending sections 9.5 and 10.7.3 of the West Warwick Zoning Code, Code of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of West Warwick. Move the ordinance. Second. Move the second. Discussion. This is a housekeep housekeeping matter. The state statute says that uh, from the time somebody files an application to the zoning board, it's supposed to be heard in an expeditious manner for a uh, special use permit or a variance. For some reason, our, our ordinance says 30 days, and that's not what the statute says. So this is just to bring our ordinance in compliance with the state statute. Any questions for Al? Hearing none, roll call vote. Angelo? Yes. Jason? Yes. John? Yes. Jay? Yes. And I vote yes. Ordinance number 2017-25, first reading. 24. 24. 
Twenty-five. We just did twenty-four. No, we just did twenty-three. My fault that time. Twenty. Two thousand seventeen dash twenty-five. First reading, sponsored by Council President Gazan and Council Vice President D'Amico, an ordinance amending five dot three dot one wind energy conversion systems five dot one dot seven wind energy conversion systems wec as by repealing said sections in its entirety and adopting a new section five dot one seven wind energy systems and five dot two one green renewable or alternative energy installations and facilities green projects of the code of ordinances of the town of west warwick move the ordinance second um just for the record i did not sponsor this so no, I sponsored it. Okay. I, I, members of the Council, I think that because of the nature of this and the extensiveness of it, I'd like to take the opportunity and give, especially the new council, a little bit of background. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a town planner, Mr. Malovich, who put into a drafted and uh, brought before the council, and the council adopted a wind energy system ordinance. It's been on the books a number of years. Uh, a few years ago, um, town manager Presley asked me to draft an ordinance called the Green Ordinance that would uh, take care of all solar power, wind power, what have you. When I drafted that, I, was n I unfortunately did not give consideration the fact that we all already had a wind ordinance on. So we ended up with two ordinances that affected wind energy. When we had the application for uh, a wind turbine out in the business park, this created a problem because there was some conflicting land, uh, conflicting language in the two ordinances. So what this ordinance does is it, number one, repeals the old uh, wind ordinance, which today doesn't, doesn't meet the standards. And number two, in the, it leaves the green ordinance in place, only it says accepting wind or uh, wind uh, wind energy system. So the wind energy system is in its ordinance. All other green energy is in a separate ordinance. That takes care of that one. By way of background as to how that extensive document I sent to you came about, I began with uh, going through in the Office of Energy, State Office of Energy Resources in 2006 and then again in 2017 put out a document called a Land-Based Wind Study Guidelines. I went through that. It talks about flicker. It talks about uh, noise. It gives you all of the stuff that a community attempting to build an ordinance should take into consideration. Following that, I researched the municipal ordinances of all the communities in the state and read those ordinances, those communities' ordinances that have wind energy in them. I then, through the help of Mark, uh, read the study pre prepared by Weston and Sampson when the city of Warwick uh, had a study done as to feasibility of wind energy in their city. I took the liberty of calling Mr. Stephen Wee, who's got a whole bunch of initials after his name, uh, and he was extremely helpful. We spent about 45 minutes to an hour giving me a lot of education in what you should be looking for in drafting this wind ordinance. And finally, I took the maps of the town, the zoning map, the land use map, the density map, all, all of seven or eight maps that we have, looking for where I thought, and strictly where I thought, would be a reasonable place for the possibility of a wind energy system. Uh, with that, I then drafted the ordinance that is before you. The first thing I did was I called on a friendship and I sent it to John Brunero. John, in my opinion, is one of the foremost attorneys in the state of Rhode Island when it comes to zoning and planning. So I asked John to take a look at this ordinance from the perspective <coughs> of representing somebody who might be coming to the town wanting a, a, a wind energy system so that we would have both sides. And I said, it's because of my respect to John that I went to him and he came back and he was satisfied that <coughs> the ordinance was, was thoroughly done and, and covered all the bases. The ordinance is quite detailed. 
there, I set out in the ordinance detailed standards of what they must meet. It involves the construction, the location, noise standards, uh, shadow flicker standards, FAA, federal and state regulations, so that I've placed a great burden on the applicant. In the past, they came in and they said, oh, you know, our company did a wind uh, flicker study, and it's okay. We, in this ordinance, we're asking them to come in with expertise to say that this is the study on the noise. This is, for example, the noise I took, we have in the town uh, an ordinance that's uh, got a 50 decibel uh, limit on noise. So I use that that we presently have. And well, that's, I, that's certain hours. So Certain hours. But what I, what I see here in your noise, and I, and I brought this up to Mark earlier tonight, why wouldn't we have the same noise ordinance as our ordinance that's in place? Because so in other words, from uh, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., it's 55 decibels for our 9 p.m., and 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., it's 50 decibels. Because people operate on a daylight schedule and the wind doesn't. So, you know, you can't say at night, night you, you, it's got to be different. What I did to protect that was there is a special provision in that section that says, however, even though you meet it, if for some reason the zoning board wants a, a lower level, the zoning board can impose that based on the location of it. So I, I did take your, that, that into consideration, David. Uh, they gotta meet FAA, they gotta meet standards. Uh, and as I said, all of this is no longer the applicant coming in and saying, you know, I had my, uh, my engineer go out and this is what he says. They gotta come in with expert, all the surveys have to be class one surveys, professional uh, surveyors. I then went to the procedure. How, how is this gonna come about? Uh, so the steps that they would have to take is they got all of this documentation they must submit. They first submit it to the town planner as a site plan review as we would do with any development. The town planner has 45 days and then the town planner prepares a report. And it just is a report. He, the town planner can go into favorable, unfavorable, change this, change that. When the town planner's report is complete, it goes to the applicant. The applicant then files that report along with all the necessary documentation, uh, documentation and seeks a special use permit from the zoning board. The zoning board in the ordinance, not only does it have to follow the exact standards that it has to follow for any special use permit, but it has to make sure it follows all of the other standards I, I put in place here. Uh, in addition, one of the things they have to do is they have to submit an operating plan that goes in with it so that it's not a question of, we gave you permission, now go, go put your wind, your wind turbine up. You gotta tell us how it's gonna operate and annually you gotta we gotta make sure that it's being operated properly. There's safety factors in there that uh, the, the, the wind turbine has to have a mechanism that if, the, if there's ice on it, it'll stop. But all kinds of safety factors that we've built in. Uh, once the zoning board gives the, uh, the approval for the special use permit, there's a bond that has to be filed, there's permits that have to be taken out, and the whole process of the construction, even to the point where they have to bring in an expert that will uh, satisfy the, the construction of the foundation, the construction. They all have to be monopoles, no more uh, erector sets. Uh, so that's all in there. Once it's up, and then as I said, they have a, a manual, uh, an annual maintenance that they have to follow the ordinance goes on to provide that when it's no longer in use, the, the demolition and the removal process is all spelled out <coughs> along with how it has to be done, that the property has to be returned as close as possible to what it was, and there's a bonding process in, in, uh, in that also. After this was all done, and as I said, at that stage, John and I had, John Bernard and I had gone over it. I then met with Mark and we went over it. I, the motion has been made to adopt this ordinance. I'm asking that the council uh, move to amend this ordinance because we, we've 
dis discussing it with Mark, there were a couple of minor changes. One was on what the setback. Initially, and I, and I put it in, and then I realized it was, was just not reasonable. From where the wind turbine is, if the wind turbine is 200 feet, it has to be 200%, 400 foot to any boundary on the site property or contiguously owned site property, 400 feet from any public way. And, if can, and from, from the outer edges of that, the outer boundaries of that site property, in all zoning and planning, you have to give notice to people within 200 foot radius. It's called the, the notice zone or the protective zone. That t tower cannot be, really, it's a, the setback two on, in that 200 foot area from any occupied building. Uh, so the, these were safeguards we put in. And we, we, when you look at the zoning map and the planning map in the town, Realistically, those are as severe as you can get. Any, anything more than that, you're just saying there will be none. Well, that's, well, that's what I was going to ask you here, and I don't want to cut you off, but we're in West Fort. If we, yeah. First of all, we're in West Fort. Can At this point in time, my, my, my study of it, I felt that they could realistically go in the business park, and then the reason it says the R10 zone is that the R10 zone, where there is open spaces, the, the, uh, the hill near the high school and up there, and then along the Patuxet River, the north branch, of, north side of the Patuxet River in Natick, and then up into the areas where the golf courses are. Those, and then when John Brunero uh, reviewed it, he was the one who said, I'm suggesting you also add into it a CI zone for the case, and there's two different types of, of uh, systems we have in here. One is the, I'll call it the individual, and the other is the commercial. So that if we have somebody in a commercial district that wants to put up a wind turbine for their own use, they can come before the uh, zoning board and they can seek variances because this is not the big commercial thing we're talking no. about. So that, that, that can be done that way. But this ordinance seems very strict. I understand why yes. you want to protect neighborhoods and whatever else. Yes. But it's, it's almost like anti-wind turbine ordinance. That's what I'm getting out of this. Now, I find it a little difficult that we just went into an $18 million deal with windmills right next door. And now, we as a town may say we want two more here in town, and we're going to basically drown ourselves out if we decide we want to put say we want to put up at the high school or wherever it may they, be. I, I, I agree. I feel the same way as David. The problem with that is those up in Coventry are doing nothing but creating problems for those neighbors that I didn't think you people want here in West Orland. Well, I'm not sure what problems, but... Um, constant complaining. Yeah, the flickering. I, I, I have some friends who live right on... <clears throat> One seven, oh, well, one hundred two. All I know is and what they I've walk read. right in their backyard. They're there. Well, they, all they I have know is what I read in the paper. Oh. Well, I I can attest to what you said. Uh, I was at Kevin Breen's farm, and they were so loud, it was unbelievable. He said some days and nights are louder than others, and the flickering is constant when the sun's out. Uh, I'm sure flickering. I know that could happen, but I, I mean, I was there with the eighth graders, and they were going, and we didn't hear too much. We were like right next to some of them. And so that's why I'm, but again, they that's why I'm concerned noise. about the uh, noise ordinance because if you're not following our regular noise ordinance, I, I mean, I got a, I, North Pleasant Street, I got a jackhammer from 7 a.m. Oh. till 6 p.m. going from a backhoe. I hear it from I, my house. And I know it's breaking that noise ordinance and we're not going to enforce it, but here we are going to say, if you're going to put a wind turbine in West Warwick, we're going to enforce that. And this, this jackhammer is going to go for two to three years, the well, way he's going. I, the, the, the reason, as I said prior, the reason I did that, I mean, I can't say you're going to have to shut your turbine down at night. So, for, for can a I, decibel can rating. I comment? So, you know, if you, if you look back at the original two ordinances that you mentioned, um, they were extremely outdated. Um, I mean, most areas in West Warwick are not conducive to, the, to these turbines. Um, we do have turbines that we purchase, but they're in Coventry. 
uh, we have to consider, you know, the townspeople and where they live and how the proximity to these things. And uh, I've read through this ordinance. I think that it makes perfect sense. Um, of course, it would have to go, any proposals would have to go before planning, go before zoning, um, and they would make the determination as to whether or not, you know, dimensional variances or what have you would have to be put in the, place. There, there is the process that the councilman just mentioned, that, as I said, the guy who wants it for his own business, uh, the 200 feet from a, uh, an occupied building, they, they have to have a special use of it. But just like when I want to build a house and I only have a 90-foot frontage, I can go to the zoning board and say, I'd like an exception for 90 feet instead of 100. I don't want to put that in an ordinance at 90 feet. I want it at the 100. And then let the, the, the zoning board look at the facts and do it on a fact-by-fact -fact basis. Unfortunately, David, what you're saying is that when I've looked at the maps in this town, there just realistically is no place in this town where we can have two wind turbines. So, like, tomorrow, it's either tomorrow or the day after the state's meeting on wind turbines, what's that meeting about? And uh, state law is going to supersede town laws. If, if it does, it does. What my concern, and I talked with John about it, was we have the moratorium in effect. There's been talk about people wanting to come in. Next thing you know, December 31st is here, and we're scrambling again. We don't have an ordinance in place. We've got two ordinances that are conflicting. We've got an ordinance that, in my opinion, is totally outdated. So I wanted to get something on the record. I gave the, the we were giving the, the, uh, the zoning board, you know, it has the power to, to, to give it some, some relief. Uh, I just, I, I, I can't, I can't, couldn't go along, I mean, if, I can't go along, it's not my position, but if, if the council wants less, they can have it. I can tell you it had to go to the planning board because that's a zoning law, it's had to come mm -hmm. planning board favorable. In the, in the uh, well, before it went to the planning board, the fall zone, and that is the area where if the thing tips over and, or if a piece flies off it, those go all over the lot in general the standard was 150%. Uh, so if you had a 200-foot uh, tower, you had to have a fall zone of 300 feet. One of the planning board members last night was insistent, and in the amendment I've submitted to you tonight, he, they wanted a change that went, said not only the 150% fall zone, or if the manufacturer recommends a greater fall zone, whichever one is larger. So that the, when it was before, when the original plan was before planning, the, the applicant last couple of years ago, whenever it was, and the zoning board, the fall zone, the setbacks, the flicker, the noise, they were it was very, very serious uh, questions asked and on And difficult that. to respond to with the ordinance that, that were in place. You couldn't. You couldn't. Um, you couldn't. And, and, you know, you, so you much time and detail. Time. That's right. I was on zoning. So much time and detail has go in, gone into the construction of this ordinance. Uh, you know, the solicitor's taken this very seriously. He's done a lot of research based on uh, information that came from the state. Um, I think that this should be put in place, again, for the safety and overall well-being of the community. Um, and should it go before, again, zoning or planning, and some type of variance is needing, let them decide, let them make that decision. Then if the state passes something different, well then that supersedes there, what we've done. There is a provision in here that any federal, state law or regulation that uh, is different than this is the governing, the governing factor. Uh, one of the reasons, David, that I would like to see it, it go in is that in general, this is a new area. I think that if we go in and protect ourselves, we can always pull back. You know, we get an app, we get an application that we want. It's impossible. We can always pull back. To go in the other direction and tighten it up, it becomes very, very difficult. So I, I, I but but I don't want to get into that. We're going to loosen it up for one developer and not another. No, no, no. I'm not talking about loosening up for a developer. I'm talking about. When, when we all of a sudden we see people coming in and saying, hey, your ordinance is impossible. 
At that point in time, we can work on our ordinance. I wouldn't want to go the other way, where, where we, we've opened the, the, the floodgates to people coming in because of the, the opposition. Uh, you know, you're sitting there as councilman, and I gotta tell you, not in my backyard. Al, Al I, I can tell you, as councilman who have been yeah. here and approved yeah. the $18 million one, we were here in 2006, 2008, yeah. when we had the German company yeah. come in yeah. and say they wanted to put them up behind yeah. the high school. And Angelo, there was people from yes. Tanglewood all here. Yeah. And then when that deal came before us in Coventry, we all looked at each other and said, well, it's not here in West Warwick. I understand that part. Yeah. I mean, we all said it. There's no denying it. We said it here in the meetings. And, but I just uh, I, was saying I would like that this is like one of the toughest ordinances in the state of Rhode Island. I would like to say that. But we're also, if you, if you think about it, I mean, we're also the smallest. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the thing, and we're, we're where would you put it now? Where would you put a, That's a what I'm saying. I don't know if there's ever been where a study would you put a or wind where they can go. Where would you put a wind turbine in Central Falls? You know, I'm just saying it's so built up. And I, I think that one of the things that I, if the council, I'd like to point out to the council is the language. Its purpose of, the purpose of this section is to recognize that wind energy systems are becoming more popular alternative energy source for both the public and private sector. However, uncontrolled location of the design of wind energy system and components may lead to an adverse impact on residential neighborhoods and visual environment. So I had to take that into consideration when I looked at those maps of where and, you know, it's... Uh, See where I have a problem, Al? I mean, residential, I agree with you 100%. Nobody wants it in their backyard. It would destroy the quality of life that the neighbors have. I mean, I agree with you 110%. Um, like at the school, that wasn't feasible because of the, the Tanglewood, uh, Hilltop, all that. But if you have someone in a commercial uh, plot, let's take, for instance, the plot at my salvage yard, 45 businesses. There's no homes over there. There's no houses that's going to flick Councilman, out. Well, <clears throat> Councilman, let me just say this. That is true. However, when you're dealing with a very large turbine, like, say, the commercial park, my ward abuts that. When I walked this summer, I can't tell you how many times people said to me, you know, are we going to have to have one of those turbines there? Because they're 415 feet tall from, from the bottom up to the top well, of the tip. That's what I was just saying. So it does affect you because it's not like, you know, it's no, a small neighborhood, I just said, but it's basically right there for everyone to be dealing me. with. You have a I seizure said, from one of these. I said at the high school, the neighbors were concerned, just like it would be in that business park, where your constituents would have a concern. Exactly. I'm saying industrial, where... It's allowed in industrial. Yeah, so then CCI they can district. put it's it right a, there. It's, it's, well, allowed in, it's allowed in our... So he can't stop it. It's, in, it's allowed in R10, it's allowed in CI, and it's allowed in the business. Now, once you're allowed in the district, then you're going to meet the other regulations. However, those other regulations are the one, uh, you know, that uh, I, I, I own a house that's in that 200 uh, foot uh, protected area. And the guy who wants to put it up comes up to me and says, look, uh, I can't put it up because you're the only house in 200 feet and I can't have a, I can own to, he, I can say, well, fine, you know, you give me a release in case anything happens. He can go to the zoning board and say, Detroit's the only guy there. He, he doesn't mind it. And get the variance. You know that's I, not going to happen. Well, I'm, I know, but all I'm saying to you is that I would rather have the people of the town protected with the authority and the zoning board to allow some, some changes in it. Uh, I do not, one thing that uh, I, I would feel very, very strongly about, and that is if the council felt that the detailed information that must be supplied in advance, if the council felt I was too strong in that. And the reason I feel very, very strongly about that was when we had the last application, we had employees of the applicant coming in with their, uh, their <coughs> diagrams and their maps talking about the studies they did on the flicker. Well, we all own, especially, you know, Tim, an attorney, what, an expert will testify to whatever that you want. Whatever pays but, but, but I, I don't want to have it as 
the employee of the applicant coming in and telling me, well, the flick is okay, the noise is okay. I want you to bring in somebody to, from the outside that's going to come in and is going to stand, they're going to be sworn in, they're going to testify as an expert and put the reputation on the line that that, that noise is okay. So, you know, that's an area I feel very, very strongly about. Now, the one thing I, I, I may have missed it was a maximum height. Actually, it doesn't, it says distant measure from natural grade surroundings, it, it, but there's no <coughs> number in the maximum height. I didn't put it in. I didn't put one either. Because for, for, different, for different projects, you need different heights. Again, that, you know, the, 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 it's, it's taken care of by the fall zone and the, and the setbacks. Because that's where you, the higher you go, the more you need. So if it's a 300 foot, I mean, what's the height in carpentry? Uh, the ones on the ones on both uh, the uh, the. Uh, so the ones the ones on 95 are 150. Yeah, 150. 156 feet tall. Oh, that's right. Uh, the ones that are in Coventry are like 256 from the bottom to the base, with the with the blade probably 415 feet. The one so, that was applied, the one that's in uh, North Kingston, is 457, I think. They are huge. So they would need. So if you want to say commercial hockey, if they're, if they're 400 like feet high, they would need a 600 foot fall zone? No, yes, yes. And the, uh, the fall zone, I will be very honest, uh, I researched not only Rhode Island, but I looked up fall zone and I couldn't find any. I mean, there's, there's just no history of. Uh, by fall uh, zone, you mean like in case it falls? Like in, in, case, in case it falls or a blade flies off. As a matter of fact, uh, and Peter Calci was at the meeting last night, and he commented, and I remembered it after he said so, of the uh, last hearing we had, that apparently these monopoles are built so that if something should happen, they are built to collapse halfway up so it, you know, the, the fall zone is not... Uh, is not as dangerous as we're making it. However, we do have members on the planning board that are extremely concerned about it. So that, and that's <coughs> the other concern I have. Like you said, now you want to let it go before planning and zoning. No, we don't. Right? We, no. And if they're totally against them, what's the no, odds no. of getting? No, we, it has to go to the town. I cut that out. It goes to the town planner for a report. And the town planner sitting there not in a decision-making position, but it, he, the town planner is going to be sitting there. What's in the best interest of the town? The town planner doesn't have any constituents he's worried about, doesn't have, you know, anything. He's, he's looking at it very, very objectively from what's in the best interest of the town and the area, and then he that puts a report together, <coughs> gives the report back to the applicant, and the applicant then files that report along with everything else to the zoning board. Right. The zoning board then sits there and they have the town official expert giving them some guidance along with all the expert, other experts I, I'm requiring. Thank you. Any questions for Al from the council? Yes. Al, at the beginning of your presentation, you indicated that you wanted the council to amend. Yes. Is there I, anything in this particular document that needs amending? I, I submitted to the council, and I have extra copies that I can pass out now, uh, the, the section that came about after, uh, after, the, uh, after I, I, that had to be advertised Thank three you. times. So it wasn't until after the advertising began that I was able to meet with Mark and John, make those changes. But the, that, that, the basic change there is from a thou original 1,000 feet data the 200 feet. I can, I can honestly say that I, I, I feel very good about being able to present this to the council. Especially, you know, and as I say, I, <coughs> I, I, I just think it it's in, it's covers everything. Yeah, on this document that you provided, is the only change what's been crossed out, or the, the what what it yeah, the, the, I, what, because that's amendment. Everything had to be underlined. The bold the bold print is replacing what's crossed out. What I will do if the council 
passes the ordinance as amended, I will prepare a new ordinance as amended with those changes in it and get it to Paula for the second reading. So can I get a motion to amend? Motion to amend as written on uh, two-page document. Two-page document just passed out. A second. <clears throat> Any other comment, public comment? Just come on up, state your name and address for the record. Mark Pasquale. I'm the owner of Wind Energy Development. I'm the developer that built the turbines in Coventry for West Warwick. Um, a few things I want to hit that were inaccurate tonight. Um, there has been some complaints in West Warwick. There was a noise study done. All 10 turbines running at maximum production. Coventry, Coventry. Coventry. All 10 turbines running at maximum production and any property line is 41 decibels. Um, I don't want to get into uh, Flicker and Mrs. Capwell. I own the land all around it. It only flickers on my own property. That's, you know, another issue. Um, a few things that I heard tonight. Um, an ordinance that's created properly for a town. We have looked at your town in um, the entirety. I had to catch my breath. So my wife's in the hospital. It's her birthday tonight. And I let you know that it was important enough for me to come here instead of there. But you're looking at an ordinance. The first thing that this council needs to do, and has not been done, um, I respect the solicitor on his ordinance, but it's technical data. We can study your whole town. There is no place in your town. You need, for your ordinance right now, you need 65 acres, perfectly square. So I guess the first question is, is do you have 65 acres in West Warwick that doesn't have any residents on it? The golf course. No. 65 acres, so we can put it in the middle of the golf course. Then you need to look north of it and how many feet north of the turbine. We looked at your entire town three years ago, and there is no really place except the industrial park. So if you're just looking for a way not to build turbines um, in your town, you should put an ordinance in maybe like East Greenwich says, and says if you're not powering your own facility, it can't go in. Um, every turbine in Rhode Island, the Bay Commission, turns over town, roads, turns over their buildings, turns over the newest lab that was been built. Portsmouth, new turbine up, other turbine had problems, not one complaint in the town of Portsmouth, no fall zone, blade distance, the same as Coventry's turbines. North Kingstown turbines, closest house, 600 feet, not one complaint in North Kingstown. Um, there's letters from the building department for fall zones. Um, Flicker and noise in Coventry. There has not been. If there was flicker and noise, there's a small group that does not like what you see. If you don't like what you see, you don't have it. The technical data in this ordinance, you might as well just say, no, we don't want anything left. We would model your whole town for you, which we already did and show that there is no locations in your town, but one. And as you move it in the industrial park. Um, the state has already allowed the turbines not to have a setback on state roads, and there's multiple projects that are being built like that right now. This ordinance is contradicting what the taxpayers and everybody in this town voted for. You stood up and you're a leader in wind. You went out, you bought turbines in Coventry that this ordinance would not allow those turbines to be built. Um, I agree on proper engineering. I agree on proper testimony, I agree on proper noise studies, and I agree that a consultant that knows when should write your ordinance. Um, it's a very technical, a technical approach. We can talk all night about the ordinance. Um, I think more needs to be looked at it. We would be offering, we would give you some consultants that can look at the whole town. I studied all of Woonsocket, Central Falls, all right? There's a, one location in probably every town. Most towns don't have it. West Warwick does not have locations except for the industrial park off of, off of 95. So we, we can look into that. Um, I think a lot more needs to be put in the ordinance. If you want to extend the moratorium, extend the moratorium. But just to approve something that totally contradicts what we worked with the council 
and the, ex, the old town manager and everybody in Coventry in the education to pass this ordinance, it, I just, you know, you're the leader in one point. I think there's better ways to do what you're trying to achieve. And Hannah can talk a little bit in detail on the ordinance, but I really do not think it's at the councils and the taxpayers and the ratepayers' best interest just to pass this to stop wind in your town. And it contradicts everything that this town has done. Can and I respond that's to that? All. Yes, Mark. Uh, thank John. you, Mark. John? So, first of all, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's contradictory. Um, yes, we did put turbines in Coventry, but we also have to look out for the well-being of the taxpayer. Um, so you mentioned a clause that powers the owners. And, and what, what should be understood is, you know, if this was a situation, like say you're in the commercial park and you have a building and you want to put a turbine in um, or a wind tower that would function as powering your building, you don't need a 415-foot tower. New England Tech runs on a, on a small 156-foot um, turbine, and they've done fine with it. So essentially, how does that help the taxpayer if it's for profit and not for the taxpayer's benefit? Obviously, the ones in Coventry, if a taxpayer benefit, this is for profit, probably for the person who's building its uh, the, benefit. The only thing I will say is, is facts are the most important thing. Um, when you look at a turbine that is at New England Tech, and you look at the other one across the street, and you look at the one in Middletown, that turbine at New England Tech does not power quarter of their facility, right. okay? It's, it's a very, very small tube. Hanner actually built the project. The one at Fisherman's Memorial, they do not, for the cost of the project, it is not cost effective I to a building. I reading an article, though, that said that it was in the Providence Journal, that, that it was being fully powered. It is no, absolutely not. I just and and that's so, so we, we want to be technical and <clears throat> exact and precise. And that's why I'm not, there's a lot of ordinances that we sit and we adapt to and we work with. And we are sitting in on the stakeholders meetings at the state to look at how you need the site and how these, this has to happen because of this exact reason. Um, but we have to be technical. You need to really know the actual facts of everything. The West Warwick, you need 64 acres to build a turbine that is financeable, that will produce three to 3.5 million kilowatt hours a year, all right? There is, there's no place that has 64 acres if you use your setback zone right now. And keep in mind, it's almost gonna be perfectly square. Because if you take the turbine that is 418 feet north Kingstown, it's not 52, um, but 418 feet, you need to go 836 feet one way and 836 feet the other way. And you look at that, you, you'll get to your 66 to, and the, the draft that you have right on in front of you now is close to 90 acres per turbine. All right, noise on, you need, you need to look at a decibel level. You cannot assign a decibel level different than the town ordinance. So if you want 50 decibels at the property line, then everything needs to be 50 decibels, right? And if we exceed the 50 decibels. So if I was exceeding the noise in Coventry on Mrs. Capo's property, then the police chief would shut us off. All right, and I will assure you that no turbine in Coventry has been shut off because of noise and flicker. Because we meet the requirements that we were permitted on. And the problem in Coventry is, is there is a small group that do not like looking at it. And if that's what the, the council does not want to see a turbine, then I can respect that but I can't look at an ordinance that has no technical data. So when your solicitor sits here and tells me I need to bring professionals in, I would like to know where the solicitor is getting his professional opinion for the, to write the ordinance that understands it. Have they been to the wind farm on the North Sea that gives all turn off certification on every chairman in the world? <coughs> Does he understand the geotech, does he understand exactly a turbine breaks in the middle? No, a turbine tower does not break. If a turbine tower fails, first off, it's failed completely, it could fail anywhere. It could fail on the bottom if it were to fail. Setbacks in Germany are used for visual setbacks on turbines and farms, and they set them back. Rhode Island is, does not have setbacks, not one of their turbines meet 
would meet any of this ordinance that you have in front of you right now. I would like to see the town. They, they, there is one site. I'm the only developer. We all know that. Um, there is no more wind developers in the state. I would like to see the town, and I would, would give a layout with that ordinance, and the first thing I would remove would be all the, the stuff for the FAA. So there's one FAA approval in West Warwick. Very unlikely you're getting another one for your height. Then look at your setbacks. And I think by the time I was done, you realize that there is nothing that can be built in the town. So you can take another direction on your ordinance. But to come out and set something when you were the leader in the industry, you might as well just come out and say, we can't build them in our town because there's not enough room. And you don't need an ordinance. All right, so there's ways to get to where you need. But for you to come out and put this ordinance on the books, it's, it, it's, it, I would be embarrassed. And it's not what your, your rate payers and the people that put you in office voted on three years ago. Put a vote out and ask how they feel about wind turbines. The majority of the people studies. put me in office were very clear. Yes, the clear. people in the neighborhood that don't want to see it. And very I understand clear. that. It's a large, it's, yeah, it's, I, a, it's about 5,000 people. Truly, I understand that, all right? But when you talk facts, North Kingstown has sold every house in their subdivision at a 2,300 square foot house sold last week at $540,000. So there is no property value and they look right at the turbine. All right, that's a fact. All right, URI did a study, a major study, and removed North Kingstown because it actually showed the subdivision that I live in that if you live under a turbine, your property value is higher. So they removed it and they did a study at URI that looked at property values. So that's the first thing you really need to look at. Is there true information on property values if it's going to hurt it? Second is noise. 95, the decibel level in that neighborhood is over 75, 80 decibels ambient noise. You'll never hear the turbine. If the turbine exceeds the decibel level in the town ordinance at 65 at the property line, you shut it off. My bank's not going to finance me if I exceed that. If you want it to be 50 decibels, then the whole town needs to be 50 decibels. All right? You cannot look, and the state citing guidelines specifically said you need to look at that section because the lawyers at the state said it was illegal to change an ordinance, noise ordinance, for an individual use. So we need to be consistent. That's factual information. To understand how many turbines, when I sit in front of a zoning board and the zoning board asks series their questions, I'd be embarrassed to sit on that committee. You want to be technical, you want to be exact, and you want to be precise to deliver the right ordinance for the town. And this isn't the right ordinance. If you want to pass it tonight, it is what it is, but I will assure you that there's no place, and there's one location that we're all here talking about tonight, and it's West Warwick. And if the council and the town does not want it, then they should sit down and look at a way just to eliminate it. But you will not find another site in your town. And I will give you my right arm to, to guarantee you that you will not find a site in this town. So to pass that is an embarrassment to the council and the town and to the people that voted to spend $18 million. Just say you don't want it in your town. Thank you. Mr. Slissel, what is your recommendation? I wouldn't have done it if I didn't. Did you want to speak? Just go up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Yeah, Mr. Slissel, I'm Mr. Slissel. I'm Mr. Slissel. I'm Mr. Slissel. I'm Mr. Slissel. Um, I think my, so my name is Hannah Marini. Um, I actually do most of the early due diligence. I, I work for Mark. Um, <coughs> I do most of the early due diligence on our <coughs> on our wind turbine applications, um, and we do uh, we do absolutely welcome um, the, the third party uh, professionals to come testify that the projects and the work that we've done is is correct. That's absolutely welcome. Um, I'm not going to go through this line by line. There's definitely a lot of issues with it, but you know, as Mark stated. There, under no circumstances will there be any wind developed in the town of West Warwick if this ordinance passes. It just, there just won't. Um, and I worked on both of the, I worked on both of the projects that were in Warwick, the shorter turbines. They produce about 100,000 kilowatt hours a year total. And West Warwick is 
is in a valley. That's you're not even going to get that. The same turbine down in Narragansett produces 300,000 kilowatt hours, but inland you're not going to get that. Um, no, and no one, no one, in state or out of state is building 100 kilowatt turbines in the state of Rhode Island. Um, the, there is no financial program to support it. There's no incentives for it. No one is pursuing that. Um, so I wanted to just. There's one thing in here that I, I think is really important since we're talking about setbacks and we're talking about shadow flicker. So the reason we, we fully understand that there are impacts associated with wind turbines. I can tell you that when someone calls me on the phone and says, hey, I have land I want you to look at, I can tell them right away, no, this is never going to work there. There's neighbors around you that are going to get shadow flicker um, and this won't work. And the first time I actually, the very first time I had that uh, instinct and said absolutely not was about six years ago when I worked for the Rhode Island Commerce Corporation. Um, actually, it was before that. There's, West Warwick has been trying to put renewable energy in this town for a very, very long time. The first job I worked for when I was putting up those 100 kilowatt turbines, my boss said, hey, there's, there's a town of West Warwick and they want you to look at a turbine at their high school. I looked at it and said, absolutely not. This is a terrible location for wind. There's people all around it. Absolutely not. Don't even spend another minute on it. So we can look very quickly and see where there's going to be impacts. I actually didn't see, and I was surprised, I didn't see any value in this ordinance around what the acceptable levels of shadow flicker are. There are internationally accepted standards, um, no more than 10 to 30 hours per year, that's the range, on a receptor, no more than 30 minutes a day. This ordinance just says something like, you need to you know, make sure you're not do, you know, burdening people or something like that. That's impossible for us to follow. This is a, it's a value that's predictable that we can, we can measure for. Um, and what's in here is not something that we can measure for at all. So um, really, the, the, no matter what you put the setback at, the reason, the, the effective setback is always going to be shadow flicker. So even if you 200, I mean 200 percent, there's never going to be wind in this town. Not a single turbine will ever go here. But if you said, even if you said one times the fall zone for setback, if you have no more than 30 <laughs> hours per year shadow flicker on someone's house and there's neighbors around, you're still going to be a thousand feet away probably to meet the flicker setback. So that's a very important value in here to define, much more important than this, the arbitrary 200% setback that's in there right now. Um, so again, I'm not going to go through it line by line from a technical standpoint, but there's, there's major issues with it that it's just, it, you're, you're, there, there won't be any wind here. I, I promise you that. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's the any longest, more questions? longest ordinance I've seen in <laughs> years. Oh, We're trying to set records here. Ordinances <clears throat> spend more right. time on this than the setbacks <laughs> for this ordinance. Yeah, any other comment? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, on the motion to amend. Um, oh, motion to amend. I, I, Just, we I'm have a first a and second. Call. Yeah, so motion to amend, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now I'm going to take a roll call vote on the ordinance as amended. <clears throat> Angelo? Yes. Jason? Yes. John? Yes. Jay? No. And I vote no. Appointments, reappointments. Before we go into this, would you, would anybody mind if we took a five minute recess, stretch our legs, bathroom break? Really? Yeah. I, I gotta go. So. Oh, go. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go Why too, I didn't take a break. But. <laughs> Mother Nature calls. Appointments, reappointments, appointment for sewer use tax board. Um, Resolved that the Town Council hereby appoints the following individual to serve as a member of the Sewer Use Tax Board of Review for the Town of West Warwick with a term to expire October 2020. I'll move <clears throat> the resolution, I guess. Move the resolution. Do I have a second? Second. And I'd like to move the name of Janice Pacino. She's a constituent of mine. She's been on this board for many years. She does a fine job. 
Uh, Angelo, I think you've worked with her numerous times. Um, so I'd like to move the name of Janice Pacino. I'll second that. Any other questions on that? The name of Janice Pacino, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Appointment for Arctic Redevelopment Commission. Um. Let's um, resolve that the Town Council hereby appoints the following individual to serve as a member of the Arctic Redevelopment Commission Board for the Town West Ward with a term to expire 10 1 22. I'll move the resolution. Second. Move and second at discussion. I bring the name of Robert Boyer. Bobby's been on there a lot with his expertise with uh, surveying and everything. He's a good pick there, and I'm just glad that he wants to get reappointed. So I'll move the name of Bob Boyer. I'll second. Move and second. Any discussion? Uh, how often do they come up? Uh, this is a four year term. Correct? Uh, yeah, four years. Four term. years. They, it, they, they have a stagger. They have a five, four, three, two, and a one. <coughs> the, the terms can. So not all the terms are the same? No, so the one year goes to the Staggered. end. So the way we did it was the five year term, which hasn't come up yet. Um, so whoever was the one year term, which I think was Jim Marsh. This is a five year term. Is the president, correct? Yeah, so it is a five, you went to a five year term, Bob? So the, the person who went to one year term, I'm trying to remember if they went backwards or forward, if we went to two year term, three year term. Bob, what was your appointment in the very beginning? No, no, you got me confused. I think the one year jumps to four. All right, yeah, so that's, it just, no. it went that way. Yeah, but isn't it uh, um, where you can only be the president for so many years, year. that, that has, two for, years. for two, two years. years. Yes. Bylaws say two years. And yeah. then you have to, somebody else has to take yes. over before you could, somebody could go back, okay. All right. That's kind of um, complicated. It is complicated. Why was it set up like that? So, yeah, it was a stagger. Okay. I forgot why. So people would have more expertise. You wouldn't be losing them all at once. Yeah. They, they, they had the experience. They knew what was going on. Okay. And if you went every two years and if all of them got reappointed, yeah. not reappointed. All four you, left, all five same, left. You'd have to go same all over time. again and start reason. over. It would be okay. a yeah. disaster. All right. Makes sense. Any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you once again. Resignation of the pension board resolved that the town council hereby acknowledges the resignation from Jeffrey Coslin of the pension board for the town of West Warwick. I'll move the resolution. Second. Move and seconded. Uh, discussion? Uh, he's just got family obligations and ran out of time, and Jeff was a good asset to the board. Um, and I regret to see him go. <coughs> yeah. um, just send him a thank you letter for his service. Uh, I know he's been on a little over, almost about <coughs> three years now, so. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Jeff, if you're watching. <laughs> Discussion action, PRISM lighting contract, sponsored by Council President Goslin. Yes. Um, is there a resolution? No, it's just a discussion, discussion action. action. Mark, I, I, I know, and John, we have a contract with PRISM. Um, I, I was re reviewing some of that contract, and we just need to get, and, and I know, and I don't think it's their fault. I think a, little, a lot of it has to do with National Grid. We, we obviously took all the lights from National Grid, and we put the uh, LED lights in. Now, whenever they need to do something, they need National Grid's approval, and National Grid's taking, I'm talking from April 5th was the last request, and here we are today still with not an approval. So we need to get to the bottom and see, and, and again, I don't think it's PRISM's fault because the emails I've been seeing, it's, it's all been waiting on, uh, waiting on uh, National Grid, waiting on National Grid. And I don't know if they're stopping it on purpose or just because it's PRISM, because PRISM is taking over a lot of the streetlights throughout the state. They've taken over a few cities and towns. And I just want to see if you could reach out to the other cities and towns that have PRISM and see if they're experiencing the same problem. At that point, we as a town may have to get with the other towns and get with the PUC and see what's going on there. Because if they're stalling uh, and to make PRISM look bad, then, you know, that, that's a major issue. 
they're, they're interfering with their business and interfering with the safety and welfare of every city and town that needs lights or uh, light bulbs or whatever that needs to be replacement or new light replaced. You need national good approval. I'm so just this is, this delay is for new lights and replacements of lights. It's solid. There's been a little bit of everything, according to uh, Joe Argenti, and Joe Argenti does a very good job with staying on top of them. And I I'm, I talk to him via email at five in the morning sometimes, and he and I are going back and forth. And he's here, and he's he's making sure every day he's on top, or at least weekly, following up with uh, Prism and whoever else. And and uh, we're always CC'd on it. It's just that. It, it, I don't feel it's Prism's fault yet. I feel it's National Grid just being spiteful. Has, so has there been an issue as far as uh, like the dimming lights does not need the approval? We're, right? not, we're not fully done with that yet. We can we can brighten them. They had a couple brightened they, up. They they can do it by hand, but they can't do it by uh, software which remote like That's, we're supposed to. Okay, because that, that was supposed to be done. I mean, before Fred even left, it was supposed to be done, right? It's not fully done. So, they're still so they can't do any with computer because I feel like we had an issue uh, on um, we talked about on Pulaski Street and I thought that they did do it through the computer, didn't they? It's not fully implemented, okay. so they're still so working some places through the they can. And yeah, and they, they haven't actually fully transitioned throughout the town. They're still right. finishing up. I think um, the issue primarily between Prism and National Grid are new lights or when lights come down and they have to so, reinstall so, the lights right, right, for yeah. connections. Right now, we have 240 telephone poles that are being replaced in West Wallach. As you can see, all down Main Street. And it's all because um, they're moving the substation off Gough Avenue and moving it over into, uh, where's that going? Over to Ward 4, isn't it? 4 or 5. So they need higher poles for, the, for that. And what's happening is, they're taking the light down and just <coughs> either taping it to the pole and not even telling anybody they're taking it down. So Joe Argenti sees it down. He calls Prism. Prism gets it up. But sometimes they can't put it up until electric power is transferred over. Then, you know, the proper grounds are installed in the ground. So they can't do that. And, and it's just been a nightmare for them also. So they've been postponing on doing any more light installs until all poles have been transferred, which rightfully so, I mean... 240 poles is a lot of poles throughout the town. So that's all I have. If we could just double check on that before it becomes a major issue. <clears throat> Next. Last. Lasky Street, Manchester intersection, sponsored by Councilman Lichardi. Um, we have a, a general site plan. I've been working with, uh, with Dave Lombari on this. And, uh, I brought it actually to, to Mark's attention as being an issue back in last year when I was, when I was walking the ward. Uh, when you come out of Manchester Street and you're heading on to Pulaski, you come to a stop sign. Then you have to go roughly 10 to 12 feet, creep forward so you can see what's coming out of Pulaski Street from the left-hand side coming from West Wall to Coventry. Um, it, it's a dangerous intersection. So the plan is, uh, and this was is with all CDBG money um, to come out of Manchester into a straight line and make it a 90 degree intersection, like a normal intersection. Uh, there is a stop sign that's already there, so we're not adding another stop sign. We're just moving that. Um, to the right, when you're coming straight now for the, at the intersection, to the right-hand side where that, that, uh, that corner is, there'll be sidewalk there and most likely an adopter spot with a grassy area. So it's going to look nice. I think it's going to, again, add to the area uh, and, and create a, a safer passageway at that point. So <clears throat> most likely this will be done, um, we're hoping, I don't want to give a time frame now, um, hopefully this fall. So Dave's been working with the, um, with the uh, developer with this. So. I have to agree with, with Jason. Uh, okay. Driving down that road, uh, which I do every day, it's it's like awful. Especially driving my daughter, learning how to drive, and I have to tell her like, yeah, you, you have the right of way, but you need to you need to slow down because people just come cruising out of there. They don't even stop, or even when they do stop, they stop at the stop sign, and you know they're actually following yeah, they the yeah they're following yeah. the rules of the road. But it's it's so far out, it's awful. If anybody's driven up that way, they can I see. The, it's it's mainly because the building's in the way, and I got the same like even when you come up the white building, when you go up Bridge Street yeah. and stop at Prada. You can't see out the left side. You have to creep your way up all the way up. Well, so this, is, this is a little. This is even a little worse. But yeah, it's similar. The house is more. I think the house is the issue, which and it's and it's vacant. But um, 
obviously we're not going to tear down the house. So this is a the cheapest way out, and I, I really think it's going to look good. So. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you, Jay. RFP for town solicitor, sponsored by Councilman Padula. <clears throat> yes, I put this on the agenda for the council to um, support putting this uh, solicitor's job up for bid. And um, also, I would like that it wouldn't be hourly, that we would put it up for bid salary. Like, say, you used 70000 hypothetically, $70,000 for the year because we've been going over our budget probably three times uh, more than what we planned on. And um, I just think that we should go out. It hasn't been out. Uh, with all the controversy, um, I think it's a good idea to put it out. And this way here, we know what our budget is. If, God forbid, you have a tragedy like the station fire, or Carullo again, that would also be brought out to bid. Uh, Carullo. Carullo, yeah, not Mark, though. We're not, I want to talk about Mark. Uh, just in case you don't plan on suing us, right, Mark? I'm going to sue you now for the surrender. But, um, <laughs> hey, everybody said that Carullo Santa Claus, so we can give you that nickname. Um, so I think that the council should discuss this. Uh, we try to go behind closed doors, and one reason or another, we couldn't go into executive session, so I'm bringing it out in public. So um, Mark and I, I brought this up last council meeting, and I had a brief conversation with our solicitor now as a retainer. <clears throat> and the retainer would be um, negotiated, obviously. So in, as we said in the very beginning, and it kind of, set off a red light in my eyes was, we don't have to go out to bid for professional services. But I agree with Mark wholeheartedly that a retainer is where we need to be. So I, I would like a town manager to talk to other cities and towns, which I think he already has, and discuss a retainer and possibly uh, going into that. Now, a retainer would be for the basic business. Now. If there's other lawsuits and whatever else, what I've seen from what Mark has explained to me also is there's a retainer basically will do council meetings, questions, calls, all that good stuff, article reading, uh, internet um, research, all that would be covered. So that would avoid monthly billing in, in all general purposes. Now, this probably should have been done years ago. Now, also, what Mark threw in there was that the cases, uh, the lawsuits that we get per year, is usually done by the solicitor also. So I sat down and went through. We're, we're averaging 15 to 20 cases a year of legal matters. So you got to take the hours at that aspect also and see whatever the hourly rate is for those, uh, those items. So my question would be, the retainer would be one price. Now, if we get 15, let's just say 15 lawsuits at 30 hours a piece a month, you know, where, where do we stand as far as cost? Well, you know, and that's, and that's, and we, can't, we can't be spending almost 300% of our budget what we're putting for legal. Uh, I mean, I don't want to really get into some of the billing and who approved them because I thought on direction of the council, the solicitor would do different things. But over here, it's like carte blanche. Uh, the door's wide open for whatever um, without getting into different things. But I can if I have to. Um, but I think it should go out to bid. I know he sits at the pleasure of the council. It should go out for bid. We should see. And the hourly, if, if something came up, if... Mark sued us, see, and Carullo's your last name. If Mark sued us, that would also go out to bid. The solicitor could make um, a presence at the courts till it went out to bid. So maybe John's an attorney, Al's an attorney. You don't pay by the hour. How much do you want to represent this case? And you go from there. So you want to bid out every case that we get? Because if that's the case, think about this. You're going to... 
So let's just say somebody comes in like, we were just here. I'm just throwing gentlemen, ideas. Gentlemen I want to hear other ideas. No, but obviously I, the I'm old way my, don't work. I'm so we got to go new. I, I just said, I think personally we should take a retainer and, and have that discussion with our existing solicitor. Now, if we feel the retainer is too high or whatever it may be, then we go out to why, bid. Why is everybody afraid to put it out to bid? I'm not afraid to put it out to bid. I'm saying I'm happy with my solicitor. Well, that's one vote. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I, and I can get into personal matters, and if anybody wants to hear, because I heard it the other day that I gave a, a political statement via email to an individual that the, my feelings and why I found it acceptable that he was late on his billing for the last three years, well, I, I will say it personally. And, 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 I, and, I, and trust me, I had my, he could tell you right out, I've called him numerous times, said, get your bills in and get them here. And this is before this even started, okay? But... You know and I know the history this man has gone through in the last four, since 2012, but the last four years have been very horrific for this man here. Okay? The loss of his brother was one. That would put anybody behind. Okay? Two, the loss of his firm moving from Coventry to Warwick would put anybody behind. Then when he moves into that firm, a loss of an associate would put anybody behind on their building. He has never said that to me. Okay? I'm saying my personal reasons. I understand all that. Well, I don't I'm have a problem with that. We all have problems. I just went to a cousin's wake. I understand. I lost a, 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 a family members. Everybody don't, loses don't family take members. That to me, please. But I mean, we're talking a budget here, a town that's almost bankrupt, seven million dollars in the hole, and 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 we got to start as a council to start saving this money, not as asking a department head. Yeah. To cut five percent, well, we're spending two hundred and thirty percent more than what we let's should. Let's see what his retainer is, and let Mark. Negotiate. Let everybody see what their retainer is. Well, let's pick from five or said, six. I just said not it. one. I'm happy with my solicitor. I don't want to change the solicitor. Well, I in think 2016, we, you didn't want to change the solicitor because you moved. He he changed his name. He went from Inventorji and Law to Inventorji. You sat here and moved and, his and, name. Oh, do you remember? Ask Ed Giroux. I said, Dad, let's put it up for bid. You know what Ed said? Timmy's my friend. I, I'm comfortable with him. Well, I said, how about if three others aren't comfortable with him? Well, if three others aren't comfortable with him, you guys can decide that here tonight. That's I'm up to decide opinion, who saves you money your and who don't save money. I think it should go up for bid. I have nothing to hide. Neither it goes I. up to bid, and that's it. What's, fair, what's fairer than that? Can I state my opinion? So I, I wanted to take the time to actually like write out an opinion because this is important, and, and it has been so much discussion, not only on Facebook, um, but in the council chamber, um, you know, so I wanted to approach this and, and talk to people and meet with people and hear what their opinions were, um, because ultimately, um, uh, I have to make a judgment on this. And so prior to being a council member, I sat in the audience for probably six years. And from the audience, my opinion is that the current solicitor has always been professional. Um, he's always been extremely knowledgeable. Um, I didn't see anything that would give me any cause to get rid of him. Um, in the position, you know, and I've only been in this position since November, but anytime I've asked a question, he's been there with the answer. Um, I think that, you know, when you go out to bid, that opens you up to possibly lowest bid, which isn't always smart business. Um, you know, he comes with institutional knowledge that goes back some time. However, I, I do have certain stipulations that I would like to put forward that I think um, in talking to different people and uh, thinking and processing this, first of all, you know, invoices have to be timely. Uh, they have to be submitted within an agreed upon time frame to ensure accuracy in billing and financial stability, as well as to maintain the integrity of this process. Um, I think we should have a contract put in place that outlines specific criteria and expectations, pay structure uh, of the solicitor position, no matter who serves in that position, as well as specific expiration dates for review, for possible renewal, or termination if agreed upon by the council. Um, these things should be in place, and, and they should, you know, and the agreement should be met. Um, we can certainly be understanding to situations that have occurred. Um, but going forward, you know, everything has to be in on time. 
and somebody needs to take the time to thoroughly go through the invoices that are being submitted, and uh, I think we need a contract in place. I, I agree with, with John on a few points. Um, and again, I've been thinking a lot about this as well. Um, we definitely need a contract in place with whoever it is. And it, it not only helps us, but it helps that it would help the solicitor, where we're comparing apples to apples. And we know this in advance, what, what the expectations are, what needs to be met. Um, I don't know, no offense, I don't know Tim since, you know, before the election, really. Um, but uh, I, I ran on, on change as an independent. And I think it'd be a little hypocritical if, since everything, all this controversy came up, and I don't know all the history, um, but, um, and I'm not saying get rid of, I don't like that term at all, because I don't consider that. But I think at this point, it doesn't hurt to go out to bid with, with the conditions that we set in that bid. And I agree with Angelo to a point, some of it I don't. Um, again, same thing with John. I think we really need to sit and, and put something together. And I think we need to limit. Um, if we're going to make a contract, it should be for a certain amount of time, just like us. We're here for two and four years. Um, I, I'm not gonna spend the, the rest of my life on the council. I don't wanna be 80 years old on the council. Um, so I think we need to set ter a term limit for this. And if things are going well, we renew the contract. If it's not, we go out to bid again. You know, but I think at this point, let's, let's, let's do it now and see where it goes. Jay? Um, I agree that there should be a contract. I think that there definitely should, uh, you know, the late billing, which I know we've talked about, me and you have talked about that a few times in the last couple of months. Um, but I think that eliminates the late billing if we have them on a retainer or, a, you know, a set pay. The question I would ask is how, how long would you have to, to set the payments for? Um, well, for if, if there was a lawsuit, how long would, would there be a time schedule for that one? Would it be 30 days? Would it be 60 days? Would it be? Well, one of the things I said to the three new council members when you all got elected, and I said, because some of you guys came to me with the concern of the solicitor. Some of you, so the day you got elected, you had people knocking on your door saying, get rid of the solicitor. And you, you've shared that with me. And I told you all, all three of you, to do your own assessment. You all got elected, do your own assessment. Now, if you feel he's not doing his job, if you feel that you want a new solicitor, then put it out to bid. But I think we could work with the existing solicitor, with Mark, let them negotiate a retainer. And at that point, if we're not happy with the retainer, and we, we think we can do better. Then Why we'll think? Why think? Because Why not just put it out because there? Because, Angela, we have 94 open cases right now. How much more do you want me to share? We have 94 open cases. We get a new solicitor in here. What do you think they're going to charge us for those 94 cases? And we're not talking 94 cases in one year. We're talking in, in, in 20 years' time, 94 cases that are pending right now. What I'd ask is, is this the right time to do something like that? We're, we're just about to have a new Five town. Years? We're about to ha have a new town manager come in here in about four weeks. We're looking for a new tax assessor. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here right now. Is this the time to, to make the change? That is it time question. to make change that we're $7 million in a hole, or you want to keep it a status quo? Is, is it time for change? Does that have to do with the, the Is it time for seven million dollars? You wanna you wanna support another one like you put out there? You wanted to support the five year plan that you knew nothing about? Is, is that that you bid on a budget that you didn't know anything about? Is that on topic for the same? Is that on it's topic a topic because we're talking about expenses? Well, we're talking about the, the RFP. We're not. And, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Two hundred and twenty thousand, twelve thousand dollars a month, fifteen thousand dollars a month. That's acceptable, and not knowing. The town manager, who's gonna who's gonna ratify them bills? Who what who did what a year ago? How do you know? How are you voting on something you don't know what well, we gotta I, pay I, for? And I agree with you on that on that aspect. And I'm who's not. gonna okay them bills? Are you gonna okay them? I haven't yet. That's all. I just said my piece. What, what, Nothing what? against Timmy Williamson. Nothing at all. It's about the 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 trouble we're in. It's about money, and it's about getting the biggest bang for your buck. Now, if that's what you want to do, fine. If you don't, I'm only one vote. I want to vote to send it out to bid. That's my feeling. Everybody else has got their own opinion and feeling. Just explain it to the taxpayers. 
Well, I just said I, I, I wanted to go to a retainer. So that way there, there's no I brought up the retainer by going out to bid. Alan? Alan Palazzo, Fire Robin Lane, West Warwick. And I have some questions. We're currently in the fourth year of the five-year plan, correct? Going into the, went into the okay, and you may not know this. Mr. Carullo may have it at his fingertips. I'm not sure. What was the budget for the first year of the five-year plan for the town solicitor? Okay, well, just you might want to furnish this to the, uh, the council here because I would suggest, from a financial perspective, you provide them the solicitor's budget for the four years of the five-year plan so far, and the actual expenses for the first three years. Uh, do you have last year's? I might have it right here. <clears throat> solicitor, do you have it? Just so everyone's clear on this, <clears throat> the solicitor's budget that the town puts together is not, it's not just <clears throat> all for me. Everybody has so Mr. Palazzo says the budget is this. That does not all come to Tim Williams. Sir. My question was hold the on, town solicitor budget. I'll, I'll tell you what the town solicitor budget was. Tim, can I, can I just comment, please? Sure. There's a line item called legal services. Sure. And the legal services consists of um, at least four solicitors. I understand. The, the, you know, the major solicitor, obviously, is the town solicitor. Mm -hmm. um, we have planning and zoning, and we currently have, I believe, two related to uh, human resources. Okay. So there are four solicitors. But I want to respond, want to, respond to the administrative line item. That's what Mr. Palazzo's answer is as it concerns my office. 2012, the administrative line item for administrative was 125,000. 2013, 125,000. 2014, 125,000. 2015, 150,000. 216, 150,000. A total of 675,000 dollars, right? My question hold on, specifically, hold, hold on, on. you, you turned, am I right? Is that right? Is that math right, Mr. Palazzo? Mr. Williamson, my question was the budget for the town solicitor, not administrative. He asked me a question, and I'm answering him. I'm telling you what I made, so you can compare it to your own notes. Now, for the last five years, 2012, 147,000. 2013, 146,000. 2014, 149,000. 2015, 141,000. 2016, 100,000. I'm over budget in five years by $9,496. And remember, I have no control of the amount of litigation that gets filed in this town. I get no, have no control about what happens when this town council gets sued. I have no control about the number of cases. Now, if all the controversies about my late billing, I admit my billing was late. I'm sorry. However, on the merits, you tell me well, you're going to get a solicitor in the state of Rhode Island because this is the lowest paying job for town solicitors in this state. But you don't know that because you don't care about that. But the bottom line is, if you think that the town solicitor's office is responsible for a $7 million deficit or a $1 million deficit, come on, are you kidding me? I didn't say that. No, I said we've got to start somewhere. I'm saying it. Yeah. The point is. Well, I hope you right. don't make $7 million. Well, I wish I did, but the point I'm trying to get at is... Do we have comparisons hold on, to other hold towns? Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. I'm the only town department head that does not provide a budget to the town manager nor to the town council, regardless of what the expenditures were the year before. I have no say in that whatsoever. They put a budget together, that's it. I submit my bills. If they're not good bills, if they're bad bills, they're questions, they can be, at, they can be asked and they can be answered. I've served for nine separate councils. I've served for four different managers, four different interim managers. Can't tell you how many department heads. Not one time have my bills ever been questioned. Have they been late? Yes, they've been late. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if I don't submit a bill, I don't get paid. And as far as running up expenses, all right, the money is budgeted. John, you've told me before, if something doesn't get paid in FY12, it carries over to 13 because you have to close the books and you do that in accounting. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to get at is 
all this so-called controversy about the solicitor, if you think that I'm the person that put this town in deficit, come on. Look at yourselves. The bottom line is this is personal, it is political, and that's it. I've said my piece. The bottom line is, have I been over budgeted for the last five years? I'll yes. tell you what's political. $9,000. When they turn you into the ethics company, uh, ethics commission for nonsense, and I was already warned by the council president that if I didn't lay off on the solicitor's appointment. You were warned by me? Actually, I said to Jay, you know what's going to happen if, I, I don't exactly, you didn't, see, so you just lied. You weren't warned by me. I said to Jay, I brought it up to you the other day, was, didn't I? This is going to get real thick because I can tell you, Timmy and Angelo have personal matters and it's going to get ugly between the two of them. Uh, Jay, that's exactly Jay, what Jay, I said. Right? Excuse me, I'd like to get back on track here. Wait a minute, I want to prove a point here. Yeah, we're going to prove a point. Listen, I'm going to prove a point because when I brought it up to you, you didn't deny it. Jay you said, guys have personal issues. We don't, I don't have a personal you have issue. Personal issues. You know what I have a personal issue? What's in my pocket. Angelo, you That's have what personal, personal issues. issues. I've seen I, the latest bills. You guys have personal issues. You've seen the latest bills. Yes. You okayed one that you shouldn't have. It didn't come to the council. Okay. Okay. September okay, 6, nothing. 2016. Wait a minute. Councilman Lachardi, right. what it, were you told? Right, hang on. In a it, conversation that we had had, Dave and I, about a lot of things, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, Dave had mentioned to me, if we would progress with this, then a lot of things may come out about about Angelo. And, and then, and then, not, and it's to protect you, Angelo. And then, you're not protecting me. What are you going to bring up? What happened Angelo, 34 years ago? Up, no. Let's I talk about what happened 10 years. Property. All that stuff that went on. I don't want to talk about hey, it. Hey, gentlemen, you can go you want. No, I do. I do. Maybe we should take a recess. Maybe we should take a recess. I think we should take a five-minute recess. Thank you. No, I don't think so. I think we should continue. I second. I think we should take a five-minute five recess. Five-minute recess. Five minute recess. Everybody can stretch their legs. This lives property. Prove what you're saying. <laughs> yes, it's not going to happen again. Mr. Goslin, I wrote you a letter in February of 2010 that addressed that particular issue. And I was assured that that would not happen again. And the only reason I'm in back engaged here is that seven years later, that is reoccurring. And that's my point. Mr. Palazzo, and I think I answered the reasons why. And I think they're legitimate reasons why. And, that's, and I've never, ever shared that with anybody, okay? And God forbid, you know damn well if it was something that happened in your family like that, and you had a business, at one point, I didn't know if he wanted to be town solicitor anymore. I want to be honest with you, because I saw this man change over the last three years. Mr. Goslin, the issue is he has the invoices. They were available. They were not submitted. They, That's the point uh, of order. When the available. issue... So you're telling me then that invoices that were submitted to the town weren't available. Um, so I guess it was I, I magic attest, pixie no, dust I, I that attest. brought them forward. Here's this man's notes of everything. And I'm sure this is how he went by his invoices, okay? And then I've been to his office and I have seen files and everything is in detail, okay? I asked specifically and I, I said, what is this that you're reading a newspaper article and charging us $32, whatever it may be? however many minutes. Who otherized it? I asked him, and he explained to me, and he showed me a newspaper article that somebody came in, went to court, and said, the newspaper said this. And you know what? He had that newspaper article and said, they were not right. They were wrong. Here's the information. Because we all know, and, I, and, no, and this wasn't Kendra Lolo back there, but it definitely we've seen articles in the past be total misinformation. We've seen Facebook with total misinformation. I understand and, and you know that. People use that in court now. And unfortunately, now he's a little more old fashioned. You don't see internet research, you see newspaper research on his bills. It is an old school way of billing. And you know what? I, I asked, I went through all the bills that I've seen, and I said, you know, why is this? Why is that? Because prior to that, none of this council, from 2006, I could tell you. I've never seen the solicitor's bills. 
It's always gone to the town manager, and the town manager is always approved. And he's right. No town managers ever, none, four. Jim Thomas, who was probably the most, he's never come to us and, and brought us bills. Well, I'll tell you what, I was president, and he did come to so me. So then why didn't you bring it up to us? I did. I brought it up to Giroux. You know what Giroux said? You keep saying you brought it up to the guy who's not here. Ask him. I'm not lying, he's probably but, watching. But, but we're, we're getting off track. My point yeah, is, care. this town is in dire financial straits. It is. And the issue here, you said it, we have to cut expenses. Uh, with regard to having a solicitor at every meeting, I don't think that's required. That's my opinion as a taxpayer. I don't think many of these people agree with that. If there is an item that is of concern, then you have the solicitor come in and be in attendance. But meeting after meeting, to me, seems a waste of the taxpayers' funds. Alan, That's just my prior opinion. To May, prior to May, the average council meeting was an hour to an hour and a half. And very, very little legal matters. After May, okay, we're now spending three, four, five hours here, and everybody's coming up here saying they're suing the town. Okay, we had a gentleman in a wheelchair, we had situations with land, we had so many different things going on. Are the lawsuits in, in, in effect? According to them, yes. Did you see them? They keep claiming they're suing the town. I'm suing the town too, for charging me too much taxes. Okay. When you see my, them, my, you my point them. is, you know, I have often seen at this meeting, uh, conversations between members of the council and the solicitor. Uh, I don't ask, I don't see written opinions because written opinions are public records. If it's verbal between the counselors and the solicitor, uh, who knows, I can't request that. Look at the microphone. I mean, hands down, he may be telling you something, it's not on the record. The records of a meeting are the written records and all electronic recordings, be they audio or visual. I think we're lacking with regard to transparency. Somebody raised the issue over the minutes before. All I'm saying is a taxpayer in this town put it out for an RFP and see what comes back. Okay, maybe Mr. Williamson will be the best. Okay, my question to you is why not put it out? The time for second chances, third chances are over and done with. I have stood before this council, or should I say your predecessors, and asked who authorized the solicitor sitting there to go out and request transcripts of a private deposition that it did not involve the town of West Warwick and then charge the town. How many years ago? That was about 15. You weren't here, I'm saying that. But this is something that occurred. That is one instance that I personally know of. How many others are out there? I'm gonna put a rhetorical question out there. How many of you have had professional relationships with the solicitor and I, that's a rhetorical question, I don't know the answer, but my point is, did any of you or the solicitor request an opinion from the Ethics Commission? I know for a fact that when this town was sued by the school committee, and I loved your brother, Timmy, uh, but there was no Ethics Commission opinion sought by either Mr. Williamson or the school committee. I went back through four years. If one magically appears, it's magic pixie dust again. But I'm just saying that events occur. We need to take into consideration the taxpayers of this town. If you don't do that, oh, let's put them on a retainer. Uh, you're sending a message to everybody out there watching this and to the reporters that this is how you want to continue to do business when I hear over and over again, we have to cut expenses. I don't see it. Mr. Williamson has made the assertion he's the lowest paid solicitor here. 
that may be. I mean, in the state, that may be, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, I have, I'm a teacher, you know that now. I always tell my students the only stupid question is the one that's not asked. The taxpayers of this town deserve at least that. And I'll leave it at that. Anna Goldarisi, Carpenter Court. I just want to reiterate pretty much everything that Alan said. You guys were elected and put in your chairs, excuse me, Ward 3, could you pay attention? I'm looking at the agenda on my phone. I didn't know that well, was Well, you don't need the agenda right now. We need you to listen. We need people that got elected by their respective wards to listen to the people in their wards. And if you guys can't do that, believe me, nobody's gonna forget. There is no excuse for this. I have been in accounting most of my life. I have worked with numerous <coughs> lawyers. Do not tell me that a year behind for seven years straight is a legitimate excuse for anything. I worked when my father passed away. I didn't get an excuse from my, my employer. Oh, you don't have to do your job for the rest of the year, that's okay. My heart is broken over losing my father, but I did my job, and there's no excuse. If you're running a law firm and you can't bill on time, I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. You have been given notice since 2010 that I have found, and this just kept going. Now all of a sudden a year's worth of invoices show up. Where are we getting the money to pay this right now? Excuse me, what notice are you talking about in 2010? The letter to uh, Mr. Gosselin. Alan Palazzo sent, Alan Palazzo sent him a letter. letter. What letter came from the manager of the town council to me about the issue? If you weren't getting contacted by the town manager right. so or the town council, so there's no, there's no guess contact. what? There's no it's contact. them. There's no contact between my client and me as the attorney, correct? <clears throat> I have worked, no idea. You've worked with so many law firms, you must know about attorney-client privilege. Oh my God, that has nothing to do with your billing practices. I this is standard no professional you said, practice. You just said there was a 2010 notice. To Mr. Gosselin. From a constituent. Absolutely. Thank you. Who got records from the town to show that your bills were behind? I, listen, I admit that my billing's behind. I admit my billing's late. And if you, that, you think the, that's fine. That's the controversy you're talking about. Okay, you got me. Ooh. That's not the point. The point What's is the point? is that you wouldn't comply all these yeah. years you're until people what, made man. noise. Man, there's no contract. There's no terms or conditions. Do you realize right now I have no rule of thumb as to when I have to provide anything? There's no terms and conditions to a contract. How you're okay I, with this? How can I be in We're violation? talking about correcting it here tonight, man. How can I be in Seven violation Seven years. Of something that doesn't exist? Really? Really? Do you not know any other lawyers? Have I you never seen? Lawyers. I know plenty of lawyers. And they bill a year yeah, behind? Yeah, oh my God. All right, enough of this. I mean, you want to attack my billing practices? Fine. You want to attack my business practices? Fine. But the point you're trying to get at is you think somehow I'm pulling the wool over the eyes of all these people I've worked with for 17 years. How That's does somebody approve. how does somebody approve? This is this is an invoice Ask that was the received. That approve him. Uh, he's not here anymore. Well, what do you want me to do, man? March 31st, 2017, billing period, June 2016. Received on March 31st, approved by Fred Presley on 4617 for payment. How in God's name did he approve a, a year past for $13,860? Nobody's Presley. that good. Ask Mr. Presley. And then before that, ask Mr. Stampler, and then ask Mr. Bauer, and then ask Mr. Thomas. And believe me, people would love to. Right, but the point is, for 17 years, town managers approved my bills. The town council, the town councilman just said he received them when he was the council president. My bills were So that approved. makes it okay. My bills have always been approved. Our town president. is broke. No kidding. Do we have a past of people that knew what the hell they so were doing? Let me, let me no, I don't think let so. Let me ask you something. Your town is broke. My town is broke. Their town is broke. So your answer is because the solicitor's bills are late. That's not Let's why we're get broke. Get rid of them because that'll take care of the de deficit. That's no. your answer. If you want to put words in my mouth? Knock I yourself do. out. You that is not what I said. Every day on your social media. All right, enough. Yeah, no, it's enough. Right, Excuse down. me. It's enough from everybody. Sit down. It's over. We can decide. Oh, so you're, you've decided it's over. Okay, Councilman. That's just I'll great. be on Facebook tonight. No, we'll be on more than Facebook. <laughs>
It's up to the council now. It's council business. You serve as the pleasure of the council. So here we are, bid or no bid. Angelo? Yes. Bid, bid or no bid? Bid. I vote to Jay? bid. No. Jay? I vote to go out to bid. No bid. No bid. Mark, I would direct you on behalf of the council to discuss a retainer with Solicitor Williamson. Bring that back to the council within the next couple of weeks, and then we can talk about it. Complete audit for the town of West Warwick, sponsored by Councilman Padula. Again, uh, this should have been done when I cried wolf four years ago, an audit of every department. Uh, I spoke to the manager about it. Uh, he seemed to agree that this is out of our control. We need expert help here. We need to see where the money's being spent. Crazy, but I guess I'm just barking up the wrong tree, but I'm going to vote to go out for a bid to do a complete forensic audit, audit of the town of West Warwick. Mark? Councilman, I, I don't recall having a conversation about a forensic audit. Um, uh, an audit for, to do each department. Well, I, I think whatever you call to, it. To be honest, I think we can we can do that internally with the new town manager myself and go through those departments and do that. Um, my concern would be to use the term of a forensic audit and to just say that we want to go out for an audit. That's a very expensive proposition, uh, generally for the town, um, and it, it's not costing seven million, is it? N well, no, but it could cost several hundred thousand dollars. For forensic audit, I talked to a few people. It's fifty okay. to seventy-five thousand for a town our size. But I uh, respect your opinion, and we do have a finance guy coming in. But I just uh, what I would suggest, Councilman, is let let us go through the budget when he gets here. Um, we can report back to the council as to our findings, and if we believe that uh, we need to proceed in a greater detail of an audit, then uh, we'd certainly be open to that, if that's okay. I that's fair by okay. me. I, I would just comment that uh, I would agree with the manager in that let's wait for the new manager. Um, this could be extremely costly. So, you know, if he feels that it's necessary, then we should probably move forward with a forensic audit. If not, we don't. I just don't understand how you want to cut from Peter and you give it to Paul. Uh, it's expensive, our legal's expensive, our uh, audits are expensive, but you can justify which well, one you want to spend that, money on and which That one would be you the don't. question, well, Angela, that would be the question I have because we spend a lot of money on a yearly audit as it is. So I think. Yeah, and that, uh, that audit Angela, wasn't that good, Angela, was it? That audit is pretty close on. If, if you read that audit, and you read it page by page, and you read, there's a summary page. That's all you gotta read is a summary page every single year, and it's broken down. It showed deficit year after year after year. And it wasn't because, it was because collections were low, and, and two or three, two departments were overspending. And I already brought this up last council meeting, was you know the fire department. We cut their overtime every single year, and rightfully so, we all agree the overtime's out of control. But the chief stands up here, the town manager stands up here and says, don't cut my overtime because it's, this is what I spent, this is what it's going to be, this is where we're going to be. And then all of a sudden, he's overspent by 300000 and then we're on his case for What I want to know is who okayed the money to be moved from the rainy day fund to plug holes when I was told and you were told that we have a surplus. There is no deficit, it's only on paper. That's what I want to know. And if I have to put in a complaint myself, I'm going to get some legal advice, and if I put in the complaint, someone so, has to pay for that so money. Angelo, Maybe the taxpayers, I, as a group, will do it. Angelo, I, I listened to the minutes of the meeting with Fred Presley saying a $1 million surplus. Listen to it again. He said, we're $1 million ahead of the five-year plan. Not a surplus, $1 million ahead of the five-year plan. So it would have been eight, eight, eight million in a hole instead of seven? No, Angelo, I'm, no. I'm Listen, saying. I got my numbers. Don't contradict my numbers, because they are I'm, fact I'm, right I'm on. I'm saying what you just said. You said surplus. Yeah, and I, then, and when then Mr. Look Petrosi, in. When Mr. Petrosi came up to the microphone last month and said it, 
I went all the way back. I went meeting by meeting, and I went to go listen. To, I tried to I spent an hour looking for that meeting. I found that meeting. I, I got it written down what the date was. I'll give that to you. You can listen to it. He says we're one million dollars ahead in the five-year plan. Whether or not that was true, I don't know. But he did not say surplus. Well, a lot of the employees heard that we have a one million dollar surplus. We're all set with that. We're all set with this. We got that covered. We got that covered. Of course, you had it covered. Angel, I mean, Who Angel, gave the okay that they broke the charter of taking money out of nobody. the rainy day fund? I told you. I want to know where it went Angelo. and who authorized Angelo, it. Angelo, I can. I said this last month, uh, two weeks ago. Here is in in here, we authorized the thirteen things, which was one point three million dollars that we authorized as a council to move, okay? But I want to also bring up something else that I sat here and I thought about last week, afterwards. After the budget was passed last year and Councilman Giroux sat here and advocated for the um, seniors, and we all agreed that we would give a $10,000 uh, off the value exemption so it would be a flat rate and it'll, it'll adjust with the tax increases, so, or the appraisals. We took over almost $300,000 out of an existing budget and we didn't plug anything in. Where, where does everybody think that money was gonna come from? That's the part I don't understand. And I, I remember sitting here saying, and, and we were talking about doing it for veterans too, and we said we can't do it all at once. So if you remember that clear as day that we did that, that wasn't part of a budget. We went ahead and did that arbitrarily to offset for the seniors and give them some relief. And it was supposed to have been plugged by another revenue we had coming in. I think he used the rainy day fund, unfortunately. Well, who would authorize that? Because if he would have brought that to us, you know I wasn't gonna okay it. Angel, I'm not, I, Listen. We, I think we all agreed last meeting that the money out of the rainy day fund was not authorized. Majority of it, 80% of it, wasn't authorized. Should have went before council. And it should have went, but we all agree with you on that. We 100%. Then what are we going to do about it? But if you look, we're going to have to try to make this budget and try to make budgets work and try to get. And what are you going to do when you need 18 million a year in three years from now to put into the pension fund? What are you going to do now? You want to look back? Oh, four years ago, let's kick Angela, the can. Angelo, last year you want to kick it a little more. Angelo, last year you wanted to cancel all the contracts and start fresh. Okay, that's great. We would have spent two, three million dollars in legal battles and and probably lost every single one because we were in contract. Listen, I didn't say, how, how are you going to get rid of all the contracts? How do you do that? Angel, during budget time this year, you said, vote no on the budget, just get rid of the contracts, we'll stop fresh. I never said such a thing. I said, right. vote no on the budget, vote no on the budget, because we're going in the hole that we're not going to see tomorrow. Does anybody recall saying get rid of the contracts? Because, Jay, numerous times during the... the uh, but well, I, I wish I knew how to. Everything's contractual. Everything's contractual. Right. Right? Did I ever say get rid of the contracts? Hey, hang on. <laughs> what, I, what I said is, Show it was, that on and me. it's been quoted several times, and I want to take claim for the quote, is we had a bare bones budget in regards to um, employees um, and equipment. So, and everything else was contractual that we, unfortunately, we, we couldn't touch. The only thing so, I said, it wasn't enough, and we're not going to make it. Any other comment? <laughs> Move on, Mary. Yeah. Reports, town manager. <laughs> I guess I'll say something because I'm putting putting this off the last couple of council meetings because they've been running late. But uh, with regard to the car tax, um, about a month or so ago, Rose was in contact with um, vision and they provided several options three options to be precise with regard to how we can reconcile the car tax because as you know um, the town had to send out its tax bills because we needed the revenue coming in and after the tax bills went out the general assembly uh, approved the um, the reduction in the car tax so basically there were three scenarios that were presented the first scenario was to not issue a rebate this year and to just issue a credit for next year. Um, that is not an option uh, according to the state. The Department of Finance issued um, a statement, I think, about a week or so ago saying that the, the that was not the intent of the legislature and local communities would not be allowed to do that. 
the other option, which is the option we're going to go with, is to issue credits in the third and fourth quarter, send out a notice to so all the taxpayers. Can I, can I you said yes. there's three options. There are three options. Okay. I'll get to the third. Okay. I'm going with the second. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the, so the second is we will, we will notify um, the taxpayers way of a notice. Um, we will be issuing credits for third and fourth quarter, and a new bill will be sent out with re reduced amounts of payments for the third and quarth, fourth quarter with a credit shown for the third and fourth quarter. The third option was to completely wipe out the bill, issue a new bill. Our concern about that was that having two bills floating out there, having quarters would be people would get confused as to what bill it would be end up paying two bills. So we're going, I think most of the communities are going with the second option. Some of the communities have had the ability to implement that for the, th the second, third, and fourth quarter. We're not going to be in time for that, so we're going to be issuing a credit for the third and fourth quarter, so people will have a reduced car tax bill, third and fourth quarter, proportionate to what the state implemented, which I believe in most cases is a 5% reduction in the value or valuing a vehicle at 95% and reducing um, the exemption or, or those falling off from 20 years to 15 years. So there'll be, there may be some credits and abatements that have to be issued for those individuals um, who have a car that's older than 15 years uh, that would have been on the previous tax roll that wouldn't be on the tax roll after the General Assembly uh, instituted their reduction. Any questions for Mark on that? Thank you, Mark. Board reports? Five. Um, I'm going to say pass. It's four. Late. Okay. There's always something happening in Ward 4. I'll keep it brief, but... Um, the Kent County, I call it the Kent County Water Project, over up, off of 117. Uh, as many of you know, uh, there, have been, there have been several hundred complaints about the roads in that area. Uh, they are being fixed. Um, I've been driving through the ward quite a bit. Uh, it's not all done. I know the weather plays a huge part in it, um, but they are being paved. Uh, number two, uh, this past summer, and I started this late, and that's my fault, but I secured money from a sponsor for a family entertainment series held in Crompton in Ward 4. Um, very difficult to get the word out uh, with school not being in session. Uh, it was a, it, I consider it successful. It was, uh, I had a sponsorship for three shows. Uh, we ran two. The third show I postponed <coughs> only because uh, the type of show it was required a huge audience. Um, so it's something that I, I, I will postpone to at some point this year. But um, I hope to run that same entertainment series outside uh, in Crompton in Ward 4 next summer. Um, three, we, we just recently had a, um, a fishing derby at the Fishing Pier sponsored by the PRA. Uh, they only meet once a month. So again, the, um, the issue was advertisement. Uh, and it was late. Um, so... That is going to be a yearly thing. Uh, this winter, I plan on putting a lot of things together for, for spring through, through fall uh, for next year uh, with some notice. Um, there will be a Halloween party on October 28th at the Civic Center. I've been doing a lot of legwork on that. Um, trying to, I want to make it low cost, no cost, if possible. Um, but that is in the works. Um, also, I'd like to report um, that about four, about four or five months ago, I want to say in April, uh, I wrote a, well, in February, I wrote a grant for, uh, for the USTA for tennis. And again, that's been, it's been very difficult to implement because we don't have a recreation department. So it's not something you can do and hand off to. So um, I, I was more conservative with this because I wanted to do it the right way. And um, right now it's, uh, it's starting in October. It's going to run on Saturday mornings, and it's exclusive. It's an adaptive program for special needs kids, kids and adults. And um, I work with our, our local uh, special needs group, the Wildcats. They operate out of, um, they represent the uh, school, out of the school system in the Special Olympics, and they represent our town. And um, it's of no cost to the town at all. So we're going to begin with that, and then hopefully next spring we can put additional classes focusing on Horgan School. So, and that's it for Ward 4. All right. Uh, 
Um, it's actually not going on in Ward 4, it's going on in uh, Jay's Ward, but Jell's Kitchen this Saturday is uh, doing a, y a yard sale for uh, a gentleman who's, uh, who's dying uh, for the family to go to Disney, the last wish for this gentleman. So it's uh, 7.30 to 1 at uh, Jell's Kitchen. If you have anything you want to donate to this yard sale, you can, uh, you can contact Jell and give, uh, you can bring it that morning, or if you can't make it that morning, you can contact her and make other arrangements. 100% uh, of the money raised will go towards this family, so it's a good cause if anybody wants to go out this Saturday. I'll pass, two, one. Yeah, I just got three important things. Um, Wakefield Street, we passed an ordinance, no through trucks. It's getting crazy. Tractor trailers since that road was done. They're crossing the yellow lines, it's a nightmare. Uh, they have one sign on the bottom towards uh, Main Street near the fire station, you can't see it. Uh, I, Dave, you're in charge of the signs, Dave? Is Dave still here? No, Freddie's not here either? No. Mark, can you um, tell them to put the signs and Chief, maybe your officers can, can enforce this this way here. You know, it's not local travel uh, traffic. It's all out of town. They cut through with tractor trailers, um, dump trucks. We understand that they have to get up there to go service a, a home or something, but when it's every day, the buses, maybe we can reach out to uh, the bus line to use Main Street and Providence Street instead of cutting through Wakefield Street. So we put a little um, warnings on that, let your officers know so they get used to not cutting through there. Um, I wanted as they off to call him, I wanted how much road bond money I got left and the mirror on Wakefield Street that fell off the pole it's been in a constituent yard for about seven months now. It's the same era that we've yeah. been talking about for like six months. It's still on his porch. Yeah. Hmm. And Mark, I'll, I'll count on my road bond money. I yeah. know Ward 1's in really good shape with roads, so I'll give you a call. that's all I have. Thank you. Upcoming appointments, planning board, one alternate member for a five-year ter term, Technology Committee, 1 Ward 2 expired 1231-18, Ward 3 expired 1231-18, Ward 5 expired 1231-18, Sewer Use Board of Review, 2, ter two for term to expire 12-10-17, West Warwick Housing Authority, 1 term to expire 11-17, Arctic Redevelopment Commission, 1 term to expire 10-1-17, Board of Tenant Affairs, one term to expire 11 2017 pension board two with a term to expire 11 18 17 and 11 18 19. public comment any public comment i only have two quick things two things were brought up to my attention one was the field house and ice rink if anybody wants to contract and bids dave gosling recused himself from every single one doesn't know anything that happened in the executive session never knew I'm sure Peter can tell you what happened in the executive session, but I can't tell you what happened in the executive session. And number two, these cameras went out to bid. Here's the bid if you want it, okay? Um, to say that they didn't go out to bid and you don't even know if they went out to bid is unbelievable. And I will say this tonight, and I didn't want to say this, but what's been going on in this town in these meetings is disgusting, sickening, and Mrs. Padula is right. These meetings have turned into shit shows, ridiculousness, and everything else. And I'm not blaming anybody's party, I'm blaming everybody here and everybody there. Is there a reason okay. why you're looking at me when you're no, saying I'm, this? No, I'm sorry, but I'm just going. Well, well you're right. looking right, right this I'm way. I'm gonna reiterate. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. I've never seen, I've it's, never seen so many ridiculous. backdoor deals up in front than I did in the past year that I've been here right now. It's, it's been ridiculous, it's been ugly. Sell, get okay. the hell out of here. That's not what I would suggest. I would. But I'm telling you now, no, and I wanna say something. We're all taking personal attacks. Anna's taking personal attacks. Anna and I don't see eye and eye, but she took one the other night that I don't agree, agree with, okay? That was nonsense. No, but, but I saw it as a personal attack. I know you, but again, we're up here attacking each other. We're all in this together. No, we're not. We're arguing over different ways we're thinking. No, we, some of us have been attacking each other. The taxpayers get frustrated and they want you to listen to them. Anna. When somebody from Pompano, Florida is saying he votes and that's it, I, that's not a constituent of mine, okay? When, when somebody's sitting here talking on Facebook that you want me to take advice from that are making jokes about rape, 
making jokes about people who are dying of that? cancer. I'm not going to say their name. Yeah. No, but where's that? I had a conversation with you six months ago that one individual loves texting people on New Year's Eve saying when they're battling cancer, I hope you die and you get everything you... If that's the people you want to take advice from, that's Can disgusting. Have conversation with me? Yes, I had it on the phone with you when I could tell you exactly hey, I when. I haven't been at the town council meetings for six months. I started coming here... In May, I'm sorry, in May. We, you and I had a phone conversation during the day. And I can tell you the name when we go out in the hallway, but I'm not sharing it now. But again, it's disgusting. We're all attacking each other, but we're all here for the same reason, for the betterment of this town, okay? We all want a better town. I'm not suggesting sell. My kids are buying, my son has already told me, Dad, I want your house. He'll be my, he's a sixth generation here. You know, I don't want to, I'll be here in West Warwick. I'm not leaving, okay? I'm not telling anybody to sell. We're all in this together. Many of you out in this crowd do a lot for this community. Okay? The Reeds, I'll tell you right now, you do a lot for this community. You've done stuff for the baseball league, you've adopted spots. We're all in this together. We can all sit here and attack each other, hate each other, but we're not going to get anything accomplished. We want, like I said, we're all in this together, and the only way, and yet, yeah, we're not going to agree on everything. We, we don't agree on everything up here. And, we may, and that's, that's perfect. We don't want to agree on everything up here. I've been on councils where there was never any disagreement. And that's not the way the town should run. There should be disagreement. That's all I got to say. Hopefully we all can work together, not attack each other, call each other names, and disrespect each other. We all should be respecting each other because we're all here for the same exact thing. I have one thing to say. I have a question, and I, I think you're going to know what it is when I talk about boards. The rec board. It's, to me, I, I don't, and I don't understand this because... We didn't have enough people to serve on the rec board. Oh, they're all there. And now everybody's been there since late spring. And I, I can name 10 items off the top of my head why they should meet. Um, and it should be on a regular basis. They haven't met yet. So I think we either need to do one of two things. We have to set a meeting date. We set the meeting date for them. Or we just disband it. Councilman, I just want to like piggyback that. It's getting late and I, I think we all want to go. but. We have issues beyond the rec board with other boards not being able to get together. And uh, I've heard things that they don't have bylaws, all this stuff. We need to figure this stuff out. Um, well, the rec but, board's set to go. It's, it's set wards one through five, liaison, and a school committee member. And if people say there's nothing to talk about, like I said, I can give you 10 things right now. Right, absolutely. And you I, know, and I so think that applies I don't, to and I don't know why that they, technology they have board, the, uh, what was the other one that's mess we need to get these things in order i agree and this isn't a mess though this is i mean just, i did the legwork to get the numbers meetings, yes. so what, what are we going to do because otherwise you're just going to be talking about this the next meeting well say. unfortunately the people who were in charge of schedule that meeting already left but i think we should get with them and find out what's going on with that with you're the councilman you're sitting on the board tell them we're having a meeting um no, but i'm not on that I'm councilman for that huh i'm the no. representation for i have nothing I was oh, chairman not, when I, I wasn't on the was, council. He was the chairman he, of the board. I thought he when was he got elected, he had to, he had to <laughs> I, leave. I thought he was the councilman on the board. You called him me? No. If I was, then, then we would have been well, done. Well, then call him I've, I, I've asked, and Jay's asked nicely, what's going on with the meetings? Why aren't they? I know asked. Jack Chagru, he sits on it. He said he's been asking for since Ray Beatty was here, and they haven't had a meeting since then. Right. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.